morning and welcome along to another weekly dose of the Modus Super Series. We're into week seven now in Series 2 after Graham Usher was crowned the champion on week six. Chris Mason was here on finals night. You did fancy Graham Usher, didn't you? There you go. <laughs> anyway, I think I know what I was talking about. Yeah, just here for one day and you <laughs> beat, beat Matthew Edgar to the right tip, so well done. Uh, let's have a look back at what happened on finals night. Me and Mace will talk you through the action. And there were a couple of players that didn't really perform. Paul Hogan being one of them, eliminated after losing his first couple of games. Yeah, he does tend to struggle on finals night. He doesn't seem to have too many problems getting to the Saturday night, but once the Saturday night starts and it effectively becomes knockout darts, he seems to struggle. And I mean, Gary Stone started off steadily, had that fabulous middle game, didn't we? We thought, well, if he can repeat those kind of numbers, he's going to be the man to stop. But uh, very much like Josh Payne, another player who doesn't have the greatest record on finals night. Yeah, James Richardson though, well he seems to come from nowhere. He actually played on the Friday night, his last match. He thought he was already out. Yeah, he got him literally last knockings, didn't he? It was um, it was make or break in, in the last leg, but this man who progressively got better as the week went on, really struggled in Group A, but didn't panic. You know, he understood that he, he'd still have two more days to qualify, and once he got in that qualifying position, as we know from previous, he knows how to win these weeks. Yeah, breeze through the semis and final Graham Usher to become the first man to win two weeks since we started here and get through to Champions Week twice. And Usher, it's interesting, we saw him beat Gary Stone in the semi-final there. He actually credited Stone for giving the talking to after finishing bottom of Group A on Wednesday. Maybe he wishes he hadn't done now. <laughs> yeah, some, sometimes you've got to be a little bit careful in that position. It is a, a real small group and... By the end of the week, they do get, you know, they do get probably a little bit too friendly, and they're all looking out for each other. But come finals night, it's he's, uh, yeah, one man and himself, isn't it? And Graham Usher is a, he's a solid player. He's produced some great stuff here, and he'll be one of those going into January. He'll be looking for a, a, a tour card like a fair few of these players here this week. Yeah, well, let's have a look at the weekly winners so far. If Usher doesn't get a tour card, of course, he'll be looking to put right what happened at the first Champions Week when he was beaten in the final by Conan White. Who do you think his biggest threat is there to go and take that title so far with half the field full? Yeah, I, I like the look of Alexander Murex. He was my he was my pick going into that. I like Justin Smith in week three as well. Uh, I think he's one of those kind of players, as we've seen, that's got a high ceiling. But Jim McEwen's one of those that's just rock solid. And if you really don't produce something special, he will keep you right under the cosh and... I, th I mean, so far, we've got six totally different types of players, haven't we? Yeah, some pretty established names and some less-known ones as well. Uh, there's plenty of established names in action this week. In fact, five of the players are heading to the World Championship at Alexandra Palace. Three of them in this Group A. It makes good reading, doesn't it? Yeah, three of them on debut as well, which is, which is really interesting. I, I had a quick word with uh, the six players that are coming in today and just, you know, well, the, more so the three that have never played here and asked them what they thought about it so far. And they said, well, it's just perfect, isn't it? And, it, you know, that's the, the beauty of playing in this environment. It, it, it's made by players for players. But Chaz Barstow, he's one that's really got to try and bounce back with a bang again a month ahead of going to Q School. Peter Jakes is always absolutely rock solid. Prakash Jiwa, a fellow from where I lived up in the West Midlands, uh, another solid performer. He's just come through the Indian qualifier to get into Ali Pali. And, of course, we know what we're going to get with Carl Wilkinson. He's, he's a player that's uh, played plenty of darts here. And Fallon Sherrock, which he's come through a bit of turmoil, not by a, her own making, of course. Um, and I think she'll be just happy to, to get the darts hat back on and, and, and come and play some play some arrows. Yeah, she, it's an interesting name to have on there because she hasn't played for quite a while in this, so it's obvious that, like many of the players in this group, she wants to get the competitive practice for the World Championship. No better place to do that, is there? Exactly. It's a perfect environment. You know, you're, you're up on a stage, you're under the lights, in front of the TV cameras, you've got a referee, you, you know what it is, you know what the format is, so it shouldn't really produce any surprises, but I've got a feeling we may see a few this week. Uh, one of the players who is in action at Ali Pali is Danny Van Tripe. He's playing in the first match against Kieran Tian. Tian actually won the first ever Super Series night here, winning on our launch night, beating Stephen Burton in the final. Great memories for him when he steps back on that stage. Yeah, absolutely. He's a, he's a player that he's, he's just going through, you feel like a transitional period from being a really established youth player uh, into becoming a, a serious senior player. Uh, and he's someone I'm, I'm keen to watch evolve over the next year or so. 
We're keen to hear from him as well. So let's do that. Paul Nicholson caught with him a little earlier on. Portsmouth. And I suppose the big question on a lot of people's lips this morning is you've got the most experience playing in this arena ahead of all of the other debutants and the other players. So how do you feel about that? Yeah, it's kind of a funny one for the I'm only 23 to be the most experienced here. It uh, doesn't fe feel a bit strange, but um, the, the, all these guys coming over, they're experienced as well. You know, they've played on the Ali Pali and the biggest stages there is. So it's just, this is, they should be used to kind of stage like this. I think it'll suit them. You've had a really interesting year, haven't you? Not having your tour card, you played with us, you've played for your country, of course. What has been the highlight of 2022 for you? Because you were the first winner under this roof on a Saturday night as well. Yeah, that was, that was probably one of the best weeks of the year for me, really, getting the win here, especially on the first night and the standard that's here. But, um, yeah, it's been a good year. It's probably, been, I've probably be, it's probably been my busiest year so far, even when I had my tour card. So I think it'll set me in good stead for next year and going into Q school in January. The last time you were in a Group A situation in qualifying for a Champions Week, it didn't go too well, but the end of the week was good. How are you feeling about Group A today? Uh, well, hopefully not finish last like the last time, but... Uh, <laughs> Uh, it's, a, it's a long week, so if it doesn't go to plan in the first three days, you can start again, but the, you, really, you kind of want to get into the top three at worst, but hopefully if you can win top it even better and get a few days rest before Saturday night. Have a fantastic week here and all the best. Thanks, Paul. Cheers. Yeah, Graham must have found that out, didn't he, last week as well. Bottom of Group A and then winning the week, just like Tian last time he was here. The Irishman takes on the Dutchman Danny Van Tripe in the first of 15 matches on Monday in the company of Chris Mason and Paul Nicholson. Yes, good morning, Murph, and good morning, everybody, and welcome to Super Series 2. And welcome back to Kieran Tian, the 23-year-old. Like he said, he's the most experienced player in this group, and that's a bit strange. But this is a new Oki for Danny Van Tripe, but not a new experience. He did play a lot of darts in Super Series 1, and he has played against this opponent quite a few times before so first maybe the right Stanley kind of match for first. him Game to start morning off our referee is charlie costafine so these players are in very good hands and trust me when i say this these guys are not going to hang around 55. quick fire action to start us off on monday morning this is danny's debut at the venue though isn't it it is and do you think that will count through anything 97 i think with some of these younger players these days they just see a board they see an hockey and they chuck well you would have seen plenty of danny 30. of course on the european tour which you cover for the pdc on pdc.tv which is well, it's off to premier sports now isn't it 40. it is next year another evolution of our european tour will be on your well, digital box and whatever it is nowadays 25. well danny is one of only a few people who have hit a nine darter with us over the last couple of years. Yeah, I was looking at that stat this morning. And that is 100. his only nine darter, I believe, in your competitive environment. Not a bad place to get it. <laughs> Absolutely not. But he is a typical Dutch player. 59. Incredibly intelligent. Really quick. Excellent with the maths. And Tian is someone who... You said you were very keen to eye up over the next year or so. I'm with you on that one. I think the potential's there. It's just about finding, not to coin your own phrase, Mace, but I think his B game needs to improve. Yeah, absolutely. And we've, we've seen sort of an, uh, an evolution. He's a, he's a player that has shot up in, in height. I know he's always been quite tall for his age, but he is, uh, he is massive. He's been doing the old Peter Shilton trick, hasn't he? Hanging off Danny the washing line and see if I get taller. Be all the bacon and cabbage, pal. It's a nice recovery. Game shot on the first. Nice the ideal finish. recovery. Well, one thing we've got to say about Danny, apart from the fact that he's taken a one-nil lead there, is that he has got a lot Second to look forward to. to throw first. Not only on. is he in the World Championship, which starts next week, but he actually has a tour card for 2023, courtesy of the Challenge Tour Order of Merit. So, I think. Top of Danny Van Tripe's Christmas card list is Scott Williams because he was in the top two 100. because he made the top 64 of the Order of Merit by the end of the year. It means that Danny then gets the next card available. So Danny will be on tour 85. for at least the next couple of seasons. Good for him. 
I always feel that I think I think we have too many Q school places. I'd I, I'd like to see the one hundred the, the challenge tour and the development tour players rewarded a little bit more for their commitment for the whole season rather than someone just rocking up at Q 100. school having a you know getting a half decent draw and, and and somehow finding their way to a to a card i'd like i'd possibly see 60. like to see that reduced quite quite drastically i'm not just saying this because you're sitting next to me and you're bigger than me but i completely agree with you i think if you look at the model of golf for instance and the amount of PGA Tour cards that are given to people on the Corn Ferry Tour. It just makes more sense. Of course it does. Of course it does. They're, they're, they're showing that they want to be part of, of the bigger picture. Talking of size, I feel quite small in there, <laughs> in that practice room. I don't know many short <laughs> Dutch players. The tallest Kieran nation on earth. Danny's a, a fairly sizable lump, but Kieran T, and you want him in your line out. <laughs> I'm the big rig. He's a big boy. Yeah, what a lineup today. Danny if you like a little bit of an international flavour, you've got five all. different countries today and the next couple of days in speaking, Group A. Speaking of evolution, of course, now that things are, the restrictions are Here opening up and there's you know, more opportunities, this is exactly what the, the kind of flavour we want, isn't it? Absolutely right. 103. The draw level. Danny's got a chance of doubling his lead here. It'll be interesting to see which route Danny goes. Yeah, it took 109 out in leg one. Well, route one. Game shot on the second Beautiful finishing. Leg. Danny Van Tribe. Yeah, it doesn't get any better. Well, he's answered the question about how will he feel about being on debut in the venue. I think he likes it. Third leg, it's Danny to throw first. Game on. Do you know how you never forget the first conversation you have with a player? And when I saw that Danny's name was on... This week's sheet, I thought, I'll have to talk about my first ever conversation with Danny Van Tripe. And it was at a European tour event. He was making his debut. He'd gone through the associate member qualifier. And I didn't know a great deal about him, just from what I'd read. But in his match, he used a set of flights that were a bit hammered. They looked like they'd been on the end of his stems for a good couple of weeks. And I said that they looked like they'd been in the bottom of a rabbit's cage. When he won his game, he pulled me the next day and said, Faulty. what did you say about my flights again? I said, they didn't look the most pristine things, but if they work, keep them on. 100. I know, we're, we're very similar in that. As soon as we see a, like a little bit of damage, they're in the bin. Some of the, some of the flights we see, you think, oh, and, that, and it's a perfect description. <laughs> 100. What do you think of the throw? It's... A very open hand. Yeah, it's, it's got, a, got a bit of an old school feel to it for me. Remember the old? You know, they just sort of stand there and and wing them in. I like to watch those old games from the News of the World at Alexandra yeah. Palace. Got someone in a waistcoat and old darts, and someone looked like Andy Cap. Yeah. But Danny doesn't have to go for the fifty-seven a bull here, but he might go for it anyway. Hmm. He's just had a look. 92. I like that. I like that a lot. Well, I was hanging my hat on the fact that Van Tripe is good with numbers and very experienced for his age. He proved it there. 60. That was a Danny really good 40. call to leave tops. Game because shot let's the face it, leg. he hasn't Danny missed it. Tribe. No, three from three. 18 darts with a 109 in leg one. 17 darts Full with leg. a 94 in leg Game two. On. And that was a 16 darter. Finding tops. His first start. This is rock solid stuff. Yeah, we're talking about the no, nations represented over the next three days in Group A. If you are new to watching the Motor Super Series here on Sporty Stuff TV, 60. I'll give you a brief reminder that Group A is three days. Only one person can progress to the weekly finals on Saturday night from this group. But wherever you finish behind the leader, that will stipulate where you play on Thursday and Friday. But if you win the group, you get two days off. And then he can come 97. into Saturday night nice and fresh. Due to that, I'm just having a look at some of the, the numbers for Danny. And of course, due to that challenge tour position, he's had a lot of invites into the Pro Tour this year. A couple of 100. runs to the round of 32. 
a winner of Challenge Tour 9, a runner, runner up in Challenge Tour 8. Kieran, you require 164. A, a very tidy season and well rewarded. Has a highest TV average of 101.55. And if he finishes 64. like this for the week, that may well get trumped. Forty-four. Kieran, you require one hundred. Well, he doesn't want to start with a bagel on Monday morning. Doesn't matter how hungry he is. Well, that was a rather unlucky deflection. Sixty. Danny Most of the time, that would nestle lovely in the sixty for a shot at double ten. Well, no one sixty finish, 60. but there's just Kieran, enough pressure when you're three 40. nil down to make sure of oh, forty. That's a great guide for him. Just needs to get somewhere near 20. that. Twenty. Danny, you Couldn't. require one hundred. Well, to keep this run of finishing alive, can still finish. Not now. Forty-four. I think you're unknown. That Kieran, if he you misses this, twenty. He will be eliminated from getting two points in this first game. He's looking for a massive comeback already. But it needs to start here. And he Game finally gets the there. So Van Tripe was just waiting on 56. And you just know yep. that if he got that shot, it was going to go because he hasn't missed double to top. But Game I noticed something this morning when I was looking at their head-to-head -head record. It's actually 3-2 to Van Tripe. They've played each other five times over the last three years, predominantly this year, four times. And it's 2-2 two -two in that regard, which makes for a pretty tight game, and I'm sure their three games 95. over the next three days will be tight. They've actually played each other five times, I do beg your pardon. But Tian is someone who really interests me about his ambitions, because he has had a tour card 58. before. Fifty-eight. Danny has not, so he's going to go in as someone who's got a little bit of pro tour experience next year. But eighty-five. You can't substitute for having that guarantee of playing each and every week. Yeah, and I would ninety-six. Totally agree with you. Normally, but the landscape has changed, doesn't it? I'm not sh so sure now having a, a tour card is the be-all and end-all and, and the PDC are going to have to... Um, they're going to have to implement 43. some changes. Yes, is sir. it at this point that I ask the really awkward question? Is it our fault? 60. I, Danny, you require I just think it's... I think it's a combination. Here's a combination. I think it's a combination of many things. I think 99. the ADC, I think the scene introduction of the seniors, which of course only affects a, a quite a small proportion. But again, it's uh, it, it's another reason to maybe rethink. You know, listen, the 80. golden goose is winning the Danny world, and yes, 68. having a tour card. But as we've seen, that tour card is is only good for maybe sixteen players. 48. When you look at what they're earning, don't get Here me wrong, it's staggering in, in comparison to what we earn. But you know, in it, it, you know, in, in modern the modern world and sport in general. Double sixteen. And let's 80. be honest, the sport of darts generates an Danny absolute twenty vast amount of money nowadays. Game and that's shot. a vastly brilliant match, performance on Danny the outer ring from Danny Van Tripe. The average wasn't massive, and he took advantage of a somewhat C game at Kieran Tian. But the fact of the matter remains. He only missed one dart a double in that first game on that stage. Fair to say if he finds his scoring boots, people have got problems with Danny Van Tripe over the next three days. Or even a few more, because he might be here for six. So, don't go too far, because we've got a very interesting game coming in game two. It's Australia versus England, with Smith against Atkinson.
Welcome back. Well, it was a flying start for the Dutchman Danny van Tripe in the opening match of Monday morning after he knocked down Hightower, Kieran Tian 4 1. Tian not producing the goods on the stage like he did last time, but remember that week he grew into it after finishing bottom of Group A before winning. Uh, van Tripe, though, excellent on the doubles, four out of five, including a 109 checkout. And it is a, a perfect start for DVT, who produced a perfect leg last time he played in this tournament. Uh, attention now turns to match two between Raymond Smith and Adam Atkinson. Uh, Smith and Ben Robb have travelled across the world to take part in this week's action ahead of their respective returns to Alexandra Palace, where Smith made the last 16 last year. We'll hear from the pair of them in a moment, but first we'll hear from the ADC qualifier of this week, Adam Atkinson, talking to Paul Nicholson. Adam, welcome to Portsmouth. And this is going to be your first full week after a little venture at our Southampton studio. How are you feeling ahead of this week? Well, uh, in the last month, I've lost my darts, but I've got a new set and I'm trying to get them sorted. They haven't been going well the last month, but the last couple of days, I've been getting a little bit back to what I've been doing over the air, so hopefully they'll, they'll click this week. So with that in mind, is it a good thing that you have Group A and potentially, if you need it, Group C and Group B to possibly make another Saturday night? Oh, uh, definitely. Uh, but it's, it's a great opportunity just to be down here and play against some of the people that I'm in the group with, so I'm just happy. Do you know much about the likes of Raymond Smith and Ben Robb and some of the others? Because this is a very international flavoured group. Yeah, well, obviously, over the years, I've watched them on the telly and stuff like that so I know who they are and I know what they're capable of but I know if I'm on my game I can beat anyone go well this week all the very best to you all right. thank you gentlemen welcome to Portsmouth this is the Oceana connection isn't it having a Kiwi here and an Aussie and you're both looking forward to your world championship coming up so Ray I'll start with you you had a great run to the world's uh, last 16 last year this is the start of your preparation leading into Ali Pali isn't it yeah, and as I said, it's been a fantastic, uh, fantastic opportunity. To, um, last year, I think uh, I went two months without a tournament, so great warm-up, great opportunity, and, uh, and I'm very keen. I've uh, had a look at the guys thrown in the back room, and I uh, think I need to turn on pretty, good, pretty early here. Ben, welcome. <laughs> You've got the longest journey possible, and the first Kiwi to play in the Motor Super Series. How do you feel about that? Yeah, it's pretty cool. Uh, same situation as Ray last year. I had five months without a tournament before the Worlds last year, and this time around to play quality opponents really for the whole week. Um, massive build up for the Worlds and like Ray was saying, everyone's throwing well, so got to be on pretty early. To know some players that you are playing. Yeah, go well guys, all the very best this week. Thank you Thanks very much. guys, appreciate it. Well, Ben Robb will make his debut shortly, but in this game, Adam Atkinson, a much hype star of the ADC system, runs into a prolific title winner in the experienced Raymond Smith. An intriguing encounter. I'm sure the boys in the box will agree. Yeah, you're not kidding, Murph. Been looking forward to seeing Adam come back. He was here in week one of Super Series one. Just a little dose of what he could do, but there's a lot being made of Raymond Smith in the last 12 months. He's had a very rocky 2022. Able to play a lot of stuff down there. Maybe not everything that he wanted to play, but he is back at the Worlds next week. And he's here for success. Now, you heard Ben Robb and Raymond Smith talking about preparation and maybe looking to help each other over the next few days leading into their next challenge. But do not underestimate how much they want to have success here this week. And I'll be really interested to know, Mace, just how much Raymond Smith knows about Adam. I don't think it'll be a great deal. First no. leg, it's Raymond to Maybe throw just first. scanning back Game through on. some of the, the, the previous from here. But he was the... Well, he, he came out of the pack, didn't he, in the Worlds last year, this stroke this year. I was very impressed. Loved the throw. Really measured. Seems super 91. cool under pressure. And one of the reasons they call him the guru is because in the past he has done a lot to help young players along their way. But what he's done for himself is incredibly admirable. 123. He's always been a very deep thinker. He's all about the psychology of sport, and he is very hard to ruffle. 
It's actually been a great year for Smiths, hasn't it? <laughs> 100. Yes, it has. And there will be four of them at Alexandra Palace. you got Raymond, you got Jeff, Ross and Michael. It's starting to sound like the new Brady Bunch. Just looking back at, at his draw in the world this year where he had that, that run. He didn't have it easy, that, that's for sure. Overcoming Jamie Hughes in round one. He sets to one. Kai couldn't follow him. 100. Sadly going down 3 1. Yes, yeah, not often you see a father and son combination in a world championship. He, he brushed aside Devin Peterson three sets to none in the next round, didn't he? 100. Yeah, Devin hasn't qualified this yet, so I think he's going to be doing what we're doing spending his Christmas with a microphone and some headphones. <laughs> yep. Not that it's a bad thing. Absolutely not. I can the action. I think we're on from the 19th on TalkSport 2. And then the, the big one. Jamie Hughes was a big win. But the, at the time, Florham Hempel was a, a new sensation, wasn't he? Uh, and Raymond took care of him. Four sets to one with a 95 average, which I was highly 100. impressed Raymond, by. Raymond, you require 152. He actually wasn't that far from getting a tour card. If he'd have won against Mervyn King, he would have got a card. And he wouldn't be here. Mm -hmm. So we're kind of glad you lost that match, Raymond. 96. On some level. Adam, you require 120. Atkinson is looking for Shanghai to steal the first leg against the throw. And he was only just edged out, wasn't he? He was... What was he? Three, yeah, he was three sets... He three sets to one up, or three sets to two... Three sets to... 78. Raymond, you require 56. Yeah, he was three one up against Merv. Double top. Seeing plenty of action already has tops. 16. Atkinson I didn't require 42. Can use tops if he wishes. But I sense he's a double 16 kind of guy. But how wrong can you be on a Monday morning? Might be the new darts ball. 22. Oh, Raymond to require 40. To get a break of throw has been missed by Adam. Very similar angles of attack when the darts hit the board. It's round the houses for Raymond. 30. And a chance offered Adam, you require to 20. the man nicknamed the Pooley. 20. Oh, that's a nightmare blocker. He might even have to go through the two shots here and sneak it in between. He's gone right. Oh, it nearly worked as well. And it did nearly Raymond, work. Raymond, you require 10. So you can't always see the angle that they have. Game the shot on the bed, first leg. That Raymond will be Smith. any early nerves evaporated for Raymond. 22 dart hold. He was the 1-2 to two favorite to win Adam's this one. Atkinson, 6-4. to four. On. Adam's really been enjoying the opportunities available on the ADC, hasn't he? Well, he's very much trade. an ADC product. Yeah. When he won his first event in the ADC circuit 130 in 2022, all of a sudden people were saying he can play. I had people from the northeast of England texting me saying he's genuinely that good. And I thought, okay, we'll, we'll see what 85. he does the rest of the year. And let's face it, we've been talking about him ever since because he's not a one-trick pony. Now, he was invited to play in an exhibition in the northeast of England because of his newly found reputation. And he, he gave Michael Van Gerwen a really good game. And by virtue of that performance, even though he lost to Michael, Michael was really impressed with him and has been singing his praises also. 140. Well, 16 on the Challenge Tour this year as well. Only edging, being edged out 5-4 by Colin Osborne. That was back in October. You can see the angle of entry for these guys, and it's very similar, and they're really starting to find their scoring boots here. That upright angle, which you might think that when Raymond hits that dot, that second dot there, that that's 81. a blocker for him, but he actually has two different darts. He has one that he pushes with pace, 
And he has one that he floats. Yeah, he can drop. You just drop into the target. May go for 18s. 41. I like that play. Didn't quite happen. As he said in that interview, he's using some new darts, which they can go as well as you like in practice, but when you actually are under the under the gun up there, 57. it's completely different. Adam, you're requiring 97. Ironically, they're using very similar equipment. They are. Very much a, just a Bristow dart, isn't it? A great second shot there from Adam. And yeah, that will make him feel a whole heap Adam better Atkinson. than the first leg where he missed five darts at a double. But it's now 1-1. One, one. Third leg, it's Raymond to throw first. Original Harrow's dart with the cock finger and so many darts have just been copied off the back of that. Very simple, basic design, of course. With modern technology now, you can have the dart weighted towards 60. the front. Some of the new ones I've seen of late where they're actually combining the the tungsten uh the amount of tungsten so back in the day it was all pretty much 80 percent uh, and 20 percent nickel obviously tungsten's denser so it's heavier and it went up to 95 percent but now you can have a dart where the front of the barrel is 95 percent tungsten which means it's front weighted so we'll sit up so that takes away any sort of trying to do it with the throw. You can keep your natural throw, but get that placement in the board exactly how you like. I heard from one of the leading engineers in World Darts that it took four years to perfect that process. Yeah, I mean, I, I thought about it years. I remember saying it to, to Leah at Wimmer. I said, well, surely that, surely would be able to just put some... And he looked at me as if to say, Mace, what are you talking about? But I was convinced it could be done. How? I had no clue. I wish I did. 131. I used to go through the process of trying to get them to, to, to drill out the back of the dart to make the back of the dart lighter and yeah, coming up with some, some right ideas. What these two are doing here is they're almost simplifying the process by using 60. a very commonly used cylindrical dart with very little in the way of groove technology. It's just a simple ring pattern. Same sort of stem and flight combination. 105. Yeah, I think, uh, well, you've, you've thrown with my darts at the World Championships this year when we were having a, having a practice one afternoon, and it's just a very basic, simple, well-balanced dart. You can sort of get in the middle of the dart, and if you put it, you know, on a, I don't know, on your finger, you'll see there's, there's no... 140. There's no weight to it. It's just a, a 65. very neutral dart with a quite a big... Normal standard flight, so you get, you know, you get a bit of forgiveness. <clears throat> Raymond will forgive himself for hitting the ball if he finds double four. Sixty-one he gives Adam a crack at a one seventy. He has hit one with us before. Funnily enough, it was in his very first game to win his very first game. Wow, that's the way to win on debut. This is where we 64. might find that Raymond four. might need that floater if he blocks it. This is the shot. Just a little bit higher and lighter. Game higher shot on the third and leg. perfect Raymond for a 2-1 lead for the Aussie. Yeah, he didn't quite get the the release point right because it, right, it was quite aggressive, that second arm was, was well over gets Adam to throw first. Game on. I'm pretty sure that there's going to be a lot of Aussie's watching on our Motor Super Series YouTube channel. So if you are, let us know where you're watching from. What would it be, like 10, 10 o'clock at night? Well, seven minutes past 10 over there? Well, well it depends, depends on if it's West or East Coast, but it's 10 a.m. here. We're looking at late on a Monday night, maybe watching a bit of darts after you've had your long day at work. Nice. A few tinnies. 59. Sure, Adam is hoping at some point darts will take him to Australia. In fact, I was just uh, remarking to you off the air, wasn't I, Mace, that I'm not actually speaking to our friend Jamie Caven at the minute because he's currently in Sydney after going to Vanuatu. So, yeah, it's... What's the weather like there at the moment? Is it there? No, it's summertime. We're coming it? into summertime. It's hot. 
And Raymond was saying to me this morning, funnily enough, he's still getting used to the cold. And I said, you might want to brace yourself, Raymond, because it's going to get colder the next couple of days. Oh, yeah. He knows all about it. He's been to the UK at Christmas time more than once. Can you remember the worlds where... 97. We had all that snow and people were having to walk into the... Walk to Ali Pali. I was one of them. Yeah. <laughs> How I got down that hill with those shoes on, I still don't know. Torvalin Dean. 138. <laughs> Adam, you require 164. Well, they're both on the same score after nine. It's good scoring all of a sudden. The averages are starting to recover a bit. And the Guru's going to have a chance to think his way to a 3 1 lead. Just want to get your opinion 92. about the Atkinson Raymond, you require one action when he comes back. Because I think it's I think it's a lovely thing to watch. But double 12 might be left here. 100. And that would Adam, have been in had it not 72. been for the other one that was in. It's very middle of the face, isn't it? So the release is very smooth. And that's echoed in the way the darts 60. land in the board, isn't it? Raymond requires 64. <clears throat> Very consistent angle of entry, which means the point of release is also consistent. Two 16s for Raymond. Game that is a big break of throw. Play. Really Raymond starting to Smith. find his feet now. now. He's not the first Australian to have played in a Super Series, People, of course. Raymond to throw first. Let's, let's be honest. I'm not counting myself. But I am counting Corinne Hammond. Also does her fair stint in the comps box, doesn't she? See we're versus Taylor's bunch. We can we can commentate, we can play. But not all of us can win, can we, Chris? This, I don't know what the problem is, it's a piece of cake, mate. Well, I've just had a, a message off my good pal. Wayne Weening. 180. Well, it's nice to know that Wayne's watching on one of the most recognisable and lovable Australian Some advocates. What Some a guy. 9pm Monday night watching from Geelong. Geelong. Oh, darting capital of Victoria pretty much. Yep. There's a lot. Of, he might, I don't know whether White Eagle House is still going where they used to host the Australian Masters, but I've been to some beautiful places with Wayne. Places like Ballarat 46. and Moe and Dandenong. Some fantastic darts venues there in Victoria. So thanks for watching, Wayne. Great to hear from you. Yeah, your son's turning into quite some player, as I know firsthand. Yeah, Brando was a good player. 79. Now his nickname's got to be Marlon. <laughs> Even if just an affectionate one. Well, we were, we were rattling our brains as we normally do when it comes to... The, the history of the sport, and of course, we were going all the way back to Terry O'Day, of course, and Russell Stewart, Wayne Weening, and then we were coming up with the, the first Australian players, to, Australian player to get world honours. It's amazing how we didn't get it wrong, obviously, but plenty out there will. Yeah, that's true. Back in 1997, when Graham Hunt won the World Masters, you we were digging to see if anybody had won a World Cup singles or anything like that before that, and they hadn't. And the next one, of course, was the incredible Tony David, who I spoke to only a couple of days ago. I hope you're tuned in, pal, and hope the recovery 44. continues to go very Raymond well. Require what a player he was. Played Super League with him as well for a good year or so. First match dart for Smith is at the Bull. 105. It wasn't that far away. Adam, you require 126. Was, was fine, just... A little west. Just like that one. Weight of the dart is perfect. But if he's going to keep going to his left. 15. And then maybe overcorrecting. 25. He might have a problem. His problem right now is that Raymond is looking to get the same result as Danny Van Tripe. Game and he has done so. And the An ideal start Raymond for Raymond Smith. Smith in his group A campaign. Taking out. A somewhat slightly below part Adam Atkinson, but there's still plenty of time to go. The doubles, they will need to improve.
but ultimately it's about getting points and Raymond Smith got his first two there. We're going to go across the Tasman now and we are going to look at Ben Robb in his debut being the first Kiwi to play in the Motor Super Series. He's up against Jeroen Mjok when we come back. Welcome back. Well, we've had a couple of one-sided results so far as Raymond Smith followed suit of Danny Van Trite by winning his opening match 4-1. His victory coming against the ADC qualifier for this week, Adam Atkinson, in a meeting between debutants here at the Super Series. A 64, the high checkout for Smith. 97 for Atkinson, the only leg that he got on the board. But it is a strong start for the Australian Right then, game three and New Zealand's Ben Robb begins his campaign next and indeed his preparation for the World Championship at Alexandra Palace where he will actually open the event against Mickey Mansell for the right to take on the defending champion Peter Wright. But right now he's up against a fellow debutant here at the Super Series in the Dutchman Jerome Miok who joined his fellow uh, Netherlands native for a natter with Nico a little earlier this morning. Gentlemen, welcome to Portsmouth. This is the Oceania connection, isn't it? Having a kick. Oh, this is our Dutch connection here for Group A this week in the Motor Super Series. Danny, welcome back to the Motor Super Series. You played in Southampton. Welcome to Portsmouth. How are you feeling this week? Uh, I'm feeling good. Uh, I love to play at the Motor Super Series. And uh, it's a, a much bigger location than last time and more professional. And uh, it's a good practice before the World Championship. You're on. Uh, this is your debut here this week. How are you feeling? No, I'm feeling good. Um, yeah, um, yeah, this is the first time for me, and uh, yeah, I, I will see it. Uh, yeah. And I suppose this being your debut and uh, a really good group of players, there isn't really much pressure on you this week. No. Uh, mm, uh, I, I know all the players. For, um, I play at the Challenge Tour, and yeah, the most of the players I know, I know him. Just. Yeah, I know what to do. Danny, the last time you were in Southampton, you had a nine-dot leg as well. So have you got this little ambition of maybe getting one on this stage too? Yeah, I hope so. But I hope I will tour it at the World Championship. <laughs> <laughs> if I have to choose, 
not here, but at the Worlds. Thank you, guys. All the very best this week. Thank you well. Yes. Thank you all. Thank you all. <laughs> Well, Van Tripe got off to a winning start, beating Kieran Tian 4-1 in the first match of the morning. Can Miok follow suit or will Rob Bruel hit this fight of first-timers? Let's find out with Paul and Chris. Yeah, thanks, Murph. Really excited to see Ben Rob with us. Uh, a very well-liked character from New Zealand. And isn't it great to see yet another nation represented here at the Motor Super Series? But... This game is about two players, of course. The big rig, as we will call him first a lot player, over the next few days, first. is up against Game someone on. we maybe know a little less about in Jeroen Mierk from the Netherlands. Someone who's been taking part in Challenge to our Action and some development to our stuff over the last few years. But like quite a few players at the moment, Mace, he is looking to see what kind of a player he is now that he's over the age of 25. Yeah, absolutely. 42. I don't know what it is a, a, about that, but it just seems to be like a, 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 flick, a switch that gets flicked. But Ben, he's already had a 100. couple of appearances in the Worlds, hasn't he? Last 16 in the World Cup this year. 41. Well, we've already heard from Wayne Weening in Australia when we're talking about Raymond. The, the time difference to New Zealand is even worse. So it will be the middle of the night there, but Ben's already assured me that there will be plenty of people tuning in. And I'm sure he's going to make you guys really proud. Fabulous action, great 60. punctuation of that throw, but a massively likable character too. Yeah, actually, on Wayne, 100. actually first world honours for Australian darts, of course, was... Wayne winning the World Cup doubles in 1991 You're only required with 160. Keith Sullivan, who I remember fondly. That looks good. So does that. Game oh, that's gorgeous. What a first Mio. leg. On debut. And your own Mirk, you just say, wow. 160. Second leg, it's Ben to throw first. Game now on. he's got to back that up. It's interesting when debutants come in and they're not aware of the 10-second the break in between legs. And you see some people just wanting to get on with it, but you have to take those few 96. seconds and that's an ideal time to take a deep breath to see what you can do after this. But I've got to be honest, everybody knows I like, I like to talk about dart shirts. 60. This is one of the best ones I've seen in a while. This big rig shirt. I've got to get my hands on one of them. I presume it's the same as in America. A rig is a truck. Big truck. And he is a, he's a big boy. Yeah, I wouldn't want to run into him at speed. But in New Zealand, he'll be called the Big Rug. Because their vowels are slightly different to ours. But one of the best things about going to New Zealand, their accent is fantastic. 125. I've got some really good Kiwi pals who I haven't seen in a few years. Warren Parry is a good friend of mine. Warren French. 140. Phil Hazel. If you guys are watching, I hope you're well. It was, it was the, the top uh, New Zealand dog when you were coming through. 100. Ben, you require 105. Ooh. Peter Hunt? Yes, it would have been, yeah. Yeah, it would have been Peter Hunt. 89. It really worked out to be a, a perfect You're only require marker, 80. Really. Back to back ton finishes. Your own was the outsider of the two here. Making a bit of a mockery of that at the moment if this tops goes in. 60. Well, that is ben, a very, very 60. long point he's using in those darts, but almost very effective. Game shot on the second ben leg. draws ben level on. at 1-1. We've had two 4-1 victories so far for the people throwing first in the match. Third leg, it's your own to, to throw continue, first. We'll Game be looking on. at... The Dutchman beating the Kiwi. Well, it's not played on 81. TV before Giron. So that is his highest, highest finish on television. He has had a, a 170 in 95. floor play. He's running average for the season. 82 and a half. 
We might need to find 139. another four or five more to contend in this group, or indeed in Group B or C later in the week. This is the perfect environment, 134. of course, to find that extra gear, isn't it? And one of the things that might really, really help Ben Robb and Raymond Smith is that when they're playing DPNZ darts or DPA darts, so if you are not aware, DPNZ is dart players New Zealand. DPA is dart players Australia. A lot of their tournaments involve round-robin format into a later knockout, which means you play a long time in that day. Having that experience might just help the Oceanic players this week. Then you require 167. Sixty-six. Cody Harris. You're only required seventy-six. Oh, I don't know where Cody is at the minute. Last time I, I heard he was living in Germany. Twenty-eight. Oh, a bit of an ben unfortunate one there for Ron Miok. Missed out on the effort for the outer ring by missing his first dart. But Ben Robb gets to the outer ring. Seventy-seven. And sails over You're the top, unfortunately. 48. Double eight. 32. You will not be pleased with those efforts. 24. Double six. 24. It's about as much exasperation as you find. From the relaxed key, we on that shot at double 12, but he's handed. You're on, you're You're on another 16. chance at double eight. Break of throw opportunities come and gone. Can he use that? He's having to move slightly right. Ooh, goes to the high side, other side of the board. Eight. Then you require that 160 six. finish seems a long time ago now. Game shot. And the, the big line. rig goes ben low. But inflates his leg difference in this one to two one up. Well, we talked a little bit more about Full play, get spent Kiwi dark first. players. I don't want to Game leave on. any of them out. We can go on about Craig Caldwell, someone who I met for the very first time in 2008 in Christchurch. And 95. A heck of a nice fella, too. Remember Darren Heroini? Yeah, I do. Yep. Uh, oh, what, what a character. 100. Someone who I expressly said to his face, don't leave. I'm having too much fun with you. He was just a fabulous, fabulous guy to hang out with. 100. Kouaka Kiri's played a lot of uh, World Series darts the last couple of years. Yeah, well, that fabulous introduction, of course, to, to taking the World Series to the Southern 93. Hemisphere has been fabulous because it's been an introduction, of course, to, to many players. We may have only ever saw the, the World Masters and, and at the, the then BDO World Champs. 119. Mark McGrath's one I remember fondly. One. Well, funnily enough, he has a little bit of symbiosis, one of my favourite words. Ben just, Rob, just looking it up. Ben Rob is playing Mickey Mansell at the World Championship in round number one. Another Kiwi played Mickey Mansell in a 60. prelim quite a few ben years ago by the name of Preston Ridd. And Preston beat him. Yeah. You might want to remember that, Ben. Because Mansell might be looking 60. to get one back on the Kiwis. One hundred and seventy-one. Then you That's require a beautiful 80. approach from the Dutchman. But Ben's looking north this time. That's a great single because it opens up the tops a little bit more. Forty. It wasn't far away. You're only required a break thirty-six. Back opportunity. Has a lean in and then straightens up, doesn't it? A very simple grip. Game shot on the, the back of the dart, but You're on me, Og. It's worked. Strolls around the stage with a bit of confidence, a bit of a bounce in the step, especially when you're hitting a double. Fifth leg, it's your own to throw first. Game on. But I'm sure there are a lot of people watching along who, who tune in quite regularly, who We'll see names like Ben Robb, like Raymond Smith, like Adam Atkinson, and think, I'm really looking forward to seeing how they're playing right now. One of the reasons why I love this sport at this time of year is because you get to see people 40. that 
that you don't know anything about or know very little about. And when we had Moreno Blum here in Super Series 1, we knew a tiny bit about him. But the amount that we learned about him that week was incredible. I'm sure we'll learn the same about your own. 140. Yeah, I think as well, the players get an opportunity to learn plenty about themselves as well. 59. Not to mention the fact there's a few quid to be earned as well. Just imagine they've travelled quite a distance to get here. And I'm not just talking about Ben and Raymond. Danny Van Tripes. Come across the English Channel with your own because they are good friends. And 40. it's not just about banking World Championship money over Christmas time. They could get their hands on £5,000 this week. Yeah, and that would certainly pay their expenses, wouldn't it? One hundred and thirty. And being in London at Christmas time isn't cheap. No. And a great opportunity. It's, I mean, this would be perfect preparation for the Worlds. 96. I would love to have like this 47. Oh, a couple of weeks before the Worlds. Absolutely. I hope they know how lucky they are. Game Nothing shot the lucky play. about that. That ben was Rob. just clinical from the bug rug. That is a third consecutive break of throw, and now he has the darts to get it done. Sigler gets Ben to throw first. Game on. Follow her. Uh, Follow his pal in, picking up an early couple 100. of points to sell the nerves. I've got a little sports teaser for you early on a Monday morning, Mace. I hope your brain is functioning Not to quite, the level. Well, I read a book once about so New I. Zealand sports. <laughs> and do you know who the highest earning New Zealand sports person is in history? Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have two guesses. Joe Parker or a golfer? 60. Well, you're close with the second one. But it's actually Steve Williams, who was Tiger Woods' caddy. 57. Hmm. Before they broke up and he went to work for Adam Scott. 99. But it always fascinates me, Adam that one. Scott, an Aussie? Australian, absolutely. Masters champion. But didn't get as many majors as Tiger. 100. And he did. Only one more person. He's got more than Tiger, of course. It's Jack, Jack. Nic Jack Nicholas. 123. Ben, you require like 104. Well, this is for the win. He's going the 16s route. Just needs one 52. little error You're only from me up here to have. A very good look for the 4-2 win. Well, he's got to go ball because that 54 looks to be blocked. Well, 60 double 15, 62. nothing wrong with that, I suppose. Ben, you require 52. They have the same amount of points from round one as Raymond Smith. Game and he's done a very good job of that. Match. Ben Rob. In fact, he has defied a superior average from his Dutch opponent. But that's a good, steady start there from Ben Rob. We'll give him the extra .01. It's an 85 average. His checkouts were better than one in three. And his highest checkout came at the very end. But the highest checkout of the day came from Miok in that one with 160. But he couldn't maintain the lead throughout the best of seven match. We'll go into round two when we come back. And the first players in round two, you will see, will be Ireland's Tian and Australia Smith.
Well, three games down then on Monday morning here at the Moda Super Series, and it was a, a superb start in the last one from Jerome Meok, the Dutch debutant. He took out 160 in the very first leg, but Ben Robb ran riot from there, winning it 4-2, an average of 85, actually slightly less than his opponent, but uh, four out of 11 on the doubles compared to two out of 11 after that stunning start with the biggest finish of the day so far. Uh, it's wins then for Ben Robb, Raymond Smith, and Danny Van Tripe in the opening three matches. Uh, the next players in action have complete opposite starts to the day. 4-1 victory for Raymond Smith, 4-1 defeat for Kieran Tian uh, in his opening match. The Irishman beaten by Danny Van Tripe, narrowly missing that double 16 to stay in the match at 3-1 down, and the Dutchman delivered double 10 to get over the line of 4-1 success for him. And it was the same scoreline for Smith, who finished off this 25, having missed the ball for a 4-1 win. But he completed it on double eight to get a victory on his debut. So the pair of them now go head to head. Uh, will it be repeat for Raymond Smith or will it be reverse for Kieran Tiered? Let's find out in the company of Paul Nicholson and Chris Mason. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. I hope you're enjoying the action so far. I've got a feeling, Paul, it's just about to go up a notch. Yeah, I agree with that. I think when you've played your first game, the adrenaline just comes down a bit and you have this state for the rest of the day that you just want to play in. One of a little hint of adrenaline, but a little bit of calmness. And that's something that you get with the guru, the Australian Open champion, as you can see, from 2022, adding to his litany of titles that he's won in the Oceanic Didn't region. beat Hoopa Puha in the final, 10-9, wasn't it? Uh, can you please say that again? I love the way you said that. <laughs> it's my fave. I love that. I love hey, it. what a lovely guy he is as well. Yeah, he's uh, an excellent dart player. First leg, it's Kieran to throw it's a heavyweight first game on. area of the world. I and mean, we've talked a lot about Irish darts this year, how... Like so Keen Barry and Katie Sheldon and Steve Lennon and Kieran have done this year as well as the people from the Northern Ireland as well. So obviously with new World Youth Champion Josh Rock, who has made a lot of headlines, but the Australian region has been kicking 100. really strong for me since about 2007, when the Australian Open, funnily enough, which was brought in by Dark Players Australia 45. when that began. The Australian Open is it's, it's a little different now. It's played in a place called Echuca, just on the Murray River, which separates Victoria and New South Wales. 100. And it's been won by Raymond, and it's also been won by Damon Hedder. He's not bad. Yeah, he's, he's had worse seasons. <laughs> yeah, 60. He's just, he's just waiting for it to click on TV. I... He's a player I watch, and it just makes me shake my head in a, in a good way, just with how easy he makes the game look when he's absolutely on it. And he's just 60. got to make that transition, as all players have to. But once he gets that right and he gets the mindset right, he is going to be knocking on the door of winning titles in 23 and onwards. He's a good muse for someone needing inspiration because he... He never drops his head. If he has a setback, he just goes back to the board and he figures something out. And that is something that Raymond and, and Ben were talking about in their interview. They, they can figure things out together. It's a, it's a very southern hemisphere Nine mentality, five. though, isn't it? Yeah, it's a very positive mindset. That's one thing I found when I moved there. It was the, the lack of negativity, negativity down there. It just... Blew my mind. Raymond, you require 146. Uh, that's why I love, love talking to Simon Whitlock. You just, you know, no matter what's, and he's had his fair share of ups and downs, but you could talk to him and you wouldn't know. 96. Kieran, you require 156. Well, I've had a 160 already today. We're not going to get a 156. There's only one route. You can get that, of course. Through travel 20s and double 18. Raymond, you require 50. Uh, Raymond. Has got plenty of roots for this, but he's spending a bit more time down in the bottom left corner all Game of a sudden. Shot on the first and leg. it's working. Raymond Smith. Yeah, earliest 
opportunity. He gets a break of throw. He takes it. Well, Second leg, it's Raymond to throw first. Right Game on. I actually sent out a tweet yesterday with the list of players from this week and somewhat trying to gauge 100 from our watching audience as to who they think will win this week. A lot of people actually said Raymond because of his likelihood of doing well, especially from last year's World Championship. 54. But there were quite a few people who thought that maybe it could be Charles Barstow and Raymond Smith in the final if they can dodge each other. Now that the best way that they could possibly both be on Saturday night is if Raymond Smith wins this group and Charles Barstow wins group B because that's where you will see Charles alongside Peter Jakes and Prakash Jiwa. Yeah, Peter is my pick. He's, he's one of those that Goes about his business quietly, goes under the radar, but he's just a rock-solid performer, isn't he? Well, he's won a week, like Kieran Tien. They were both involved in the Champions Week, which was ultimately won by Conan Whitehead, banking that £20,000 check, and I'm sure he was 60. washing confetti out of his beard for at least a week afterwards. Yeah, I mean, Charles Barstow's all-time record, which is 225 matches old, his average is 90.7, a high of 117.88, the highest of all the players this week. Of course, we do have three on, well, four on debut. 135. Raymond, you require 87. With Dylan coming in on Thursday and Friday morning. Oh, he's starting to sharpen up. That slightly edgy start is history. Game and he's starting to play properly. Though. Raymond Smith. This is excellent from Raymond Smith. Whereas he was averaging somewhere around the low to Third mid 80s in his first, first game. He's game cranked on. it up to a 16 dart average for the first two legs here, giving Kieran Tien a couple of nightmares. 96. Averaging 94 right now, Raymond Smith. Yeah, looking at Peter Jakes' all time stats. 71 matches played and averaging just shy of 88. 99 one 81 matches. You were just remarking to me about last week how Gary Stone hit 49 yeah. one his last week. <laughs> That's quite some effort. Well, the week I the week I played, and I, I thought I was going along quite nicely with 41, and I was looking at his stats, and he trumped that by four and had a night to go. 100. Stats this year. Again, Barstow averaging over 90 for the year. 44. Danny on debut this year, prior to this week. He's averaging over 88. Well, Liam has just dropped his dart there. And I think... Whilst he was retrieving it, he was trying to figure out where he was going to go. But the one thing that I'm taking from this game so far is just how straight he's become. He's figured out his line. He may have found a spot on the carpet next to the hockey that he thinks that's the sweet spot. Yep. And if he has found it, stay where you are. Raymond, you require 130. This is very doable, the way he's playing right now. Stay there for double five. For the ball. 81. Kieran, you require 164. Correct me if I'm wrong, but didn't he miss that for the match in his first game? He didn't get that close, though. In fact, I do retract. He got closer. That's what I meant to say. But he'll be closer to victory if he takes 49. And the way he's been hitting double 16, he's surely going 17 here. And if he does this in two, the average will be very close to 100. 17. Oh. Kieran, you require that is a let off. Mm, he's probably more shocked that that's not gone in. Game that shot one's in third leg. Kieran Tia. And it is now 2 1 when it really should be 3 0. But they're the kind of legs that give Ball you a little bit of an early mental first. test. Game on. See where you're at in taking a few blows. Well, when you're playing well, this is the point that you respond and. 
uh, you know, knocking a, a full visit or or less leg, just out of frustration. <clears throat> when you're not playing well, this is when you begin to get embroiled. And because we have the benefit 100. of players who don't have a tour card, that's, of course, the basic rule of how we can select players. I had a, somebody asking me yesterday how we s select the players. Well, we try and find you the best players from around the world 100. who don't have tour cards, and we fit them into our schedule as best we can. But and, of course, got to fit in their schedule because the vast majority that don't have tour cards, of course, work full-time. So. Correct. And if you go back 12 months ago, we did exactly the same in our old studio. Who did we find? Let me just think back. I don't even need to think because 100. the winner of the final two weeks before the World Championship last year was a certain Matt Campbell. Yeah, he's not gone on to have a bad uh, Worlds and a bad year. He was fabulous. 122. Well, he averaged over 107, didn't he? Did the comms on that one. Well, the thing is, this time, because we have a different Super Series format, the Champions Week isn't for a while. This is week 7 of 12 in qualifying, so the Champions Week will not be until 2023. Whereas last year, Matt had the chance to play in week 4 and also week 5. So slightly different this year. Um, that's why I tried to remind James Richardson on Saturday night, oh, maybe not lost, because as a runner-up, if those Kieran, that have already won a week get a tour card, they, of course, can't come back, so we look at the runner-ups. Yep. It all comes down to their averages and how they performed. And Tian's got every right to shake his 40. head on that treble 18 effort. It was eight. a wild one, wasn't it? Game shot Beautifully the crafted leg. there from Smith, Raymond Smith, who is very comfortable with being in charge in this second game of the day. Well, we did say that the scoring wasn't leg, it's Kieran to too throw bad. First. Game on from Raymond in his opening game, but his doubling, he missed 10 darts at a double. At the moment, he's three from nine. He's maintained that scoring. He's averaging 94. He's in control three one up. And I think he's going to be one of those that's just going to get better. And better and better as he gets more and more used to the environment and the format. I completely and agree because I would classify him as an intrinsic player, someone who plays and wants to feel better by playing well. Extrinsic players 96. are all about external motivations like money, trophies, that kind of thing. Raymond wants to feel good when he plays. That's why he's so focused. 100. That throw is a thing of beauty, isn't it? Full extension. I'm not surprised that Kieran Tien's throwing 60. downwards. And he's probably got the same tailor as Shaquille O'Neal. That's just rock solid, isn't it? The acceleration, which is something I, I talk about a lot, the acceleration is, is there's no overexertion. It's just controlled, and when when you get to the the back of the backswing, you, you see a lot of players, especially players that are quite quick. That acceleration would be too quick, which you can't replicate because it's too explosive. So there's no control. You're only throwing a twenty odd gram bit of metal at the board, not a not a shot put. If you look at that extension. At the end, that wrist comes through. Fifty-four. Graceful action. It reminds me a little bit of Mervyn King. Yeah, he's got a beautiful throw. He should have. He's worked hard enough at it. <laughs> Fifty-nine. Well, this is where you want to put in your last maximum of a game and to of set yourself it, up for a double. Yeah, and and as well, boy, that's where a lot of injuries come from because that is just the the. 134. The and the speed is too require aggressive. 111. There's pressure on this now with that lovely visit from Raymond. 54. Turns into tops. Game and shot. That is fifth gorgeous. Play. Kieran Tian. Denying Raymond Smith the chance to win the match. And Tian may just have a little bit of a way out here. Nice mark of respect Raymond there from Raymond first. because that really was an Game excellent on. finish there from Kieran Tian. Yeah, and he was he was under it. 
uh, and Raymond comes across from what little I do know Nine about six him, seven. just from having been around him last year with that wonderful run in the worlds that he almost relishes competition. And again, that's another Aussie thing, isn't it? Oh yeah. He might have to travel hundreds of kilometers just to play a local tournament over there. 29. So hopping over the other side of the world, it's just normal for him now. He's played at Lakeside. He's played at the Palace. I just wonder, you know, I haven't asked him this for good reason. I'd like to 100. speculate, even if it's just for 24 hours. He's obviously not got the ranking money from last year's World Championship because he didn't have a card. It would be wiped out as soon as the tournament's over. 180. But it does depend on his circumstances whether he'd like to stay, like GG Mathers did, to see if he could get a card after the World Championship, regardless of what happened. Now, before we go any further, Gigi Mathers is a good friend of ours here at the Super Series. He recently lost his tour card, and he has decided to go back to Australia. And he's worked with us here uh, in the back room and done a lot of 55. great work. I just want to say thank you to Gigi. He was a great, he's a great friend of ours. He will remain that being the case. And we're going to miss you, pal. And we hope to see you again soon. Yeah, absolutely. Echo those sentiments. 140. And he played very well in the qualifiers, didn't he? Very didn't nearly. Didn't he just? Got in the worlds. And my fingers crossed for him. Yeah, there was talk with Raymond, 58. of course, last well, this year, wasn't there? That if, he, if he did win that match against Mervyn, would have got his tour card. He was. The, the, the talk was staying over for, for a year and, and playing on the tour. One of the things about 40. living in such a beautiful place like Australia and having to sacrifice the weather and the lifestyle for the dream. And yeah, no wonder you moved there. Yeah. <laughs> Especially the walk I had this morning. <laughs> and I chose to move back. More fool me. But the dream paid off. I'm still living my dream. 81. you require 83. Kyle followed his dream. And he will forever live in our hearts. Part of the board. Oh, that's close. That would have been Kieran, you require 98. Yeah, I missed the video calls from Kyle at 3 a.m. in the morning, calling me something that I can't repeat. <laughs> he hasn't missed the double yet, Kieran Tien, but he's not at the double yet. And he's not going to get there. Smith knows a thing or two about hitting a 25 for the match. He's already done it once today. 66. Roman, you require 25. For the match. Overpitched. Game oh, shot a little bit of and the match. Similarity Rainsby. between that 25 checkout and the previous one because the first effort at double eight was a little high. The second one was perfectly adjusted and he's doubled his points tally with an improved performance on his first game by around about five points. It was a lot better than that earlier in the game, but the fact that Tian got 100% on the doubles but just didn't get enough chances we know where he's going to have to improve. We're going to reach the one-third point of our action for Monday as Kiwi Ben Rob is now up against Danny Van Tripe. This could be very good, so don't miss it.
This is the Moda Super Series. One hundred and eighty. And you could be here as well. Tickets this week are expected to be in high demand with the five World Championship players in action. Some of them, of course, will more than likely make it through to finals night. Maybe even Fallon Sherrick, one of the biggest names in world darts right now. Head to dartshop.tv to find out how you can secure your ticket. And the best part, they are absolutely free. Right then, just a reflection on that match before the break. It was won by Raymond Smith, the first player to win both of his matches so far, getting the better of Kieran Tian, an average of almost 10 points more than Tian, who only really stayed in the match because he didn't miss a double from his two attempts. 100% for him, 111 check out the high, but Raymond Smith took out 25 for the second successive match to complete victory. Uh, game five now then, and it's a meeting between two players who also won their opening match as Kieran Tian takes on Ben Robb. Uh, sorry, Danny Van Tripp takes on Ben Robb. Van Tripp prevailed against Tian with the aid of this 109 checkout in his first game. And Robb, well, he secured an early victory, triumphing over fellow Super Series debutant Jerome Miok. So Raymond Smith has set the standard, winning his first couple of games. One of this pair will join him in doubling their points tally for the morning. It's Rob against Van Tripp, as described by the asset and the ace. Well, I'm the asset and he's the ace. I actually quite like the sound of that, Mace. It sounds like we've got our own podcast. <laughs> well, Danny Van Tripp started pretty well. Got himself a ton plus check out in his first game, but Ben Rob from the North Island of New Zealand. One of my favorite places on earth. But the 25 year old is from Breda. A very lovely place in the Netherlands somewhere. I've actually been there before. Yeah, they used to have a, a sort of a Dutch Open type tournament there that I managed to win one, one year and that was in Breda. It was a, it was a, it was a PDC event. But it was a, an open event. It was first leg. It's Ben to throw first. Quite bizarre Game period on. where everybody seemed to be just thrown in one hat. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't always the case. No, I travelled over with Waza and Rod Arrington and Colin Lloyd. We had, we had some party afterwards, let's put it that way. But I can remember I played my first game at 9 in the morning and got on stage at 10.30 at night for the final. 100. Oh, there the dears. I remember winning a tournament like that once in Wagga Wagga in New South place. Wales. 100. You were just referring to interesting names of suburbs, weren't you? In, yeah, in it's interesting. New that, Zealand and well, there's a Wellington and there, there's a place not very far from where I live in, in Devon. The same, but then the suburbs and the totally random names. I see that BGA. influence from obviously the the UK with. I say with, with regard to the places like that. That's the beautiful thing about 85. With the oceanic region in Australia and in New Zealand. You've got the influence of the immigration, then you've got the, the heritage of Maori or 100. indigenous people. And I love that, that clash of, of cultures. There's a lot of ben, you influence around the world. They were yeah. some of the best explorers back in the 14, 15, 16 centuries. Well, that was one thing Carl was very proud of, wasn't it? His Aboriginal 57. heritage. 57. Danny, you require 116. He's pulled that one just a little bit to his left. 27. Now, ben, you, you require look at the way that these guys actually throw their darts. It's not that dissimilar. It They've isn't. Both got a very open hand and a bullseye. 
61. Still haven't found Danny one today, Rapoia, have we? 89. Not, not when they've needed one. <laughs> 16. Game shot on the first That's a very, leg. very good break of throw there for Danny in 17 darts. But, yeah, look at the right hand of these dart players when they draw that dart back. Second leg, it's Danny to throw Almost first. as if it's like Game a on. Venus flytrap waiting to pounce. Opens up and then thrust forward. 137. It's a very organic action, isn't it, that Danny has? It's not something you would coach. Now you can tell the, these two pretty much at whatever 81. point in their life they picked up a dart, it was like this. And it, and the, the grip is very similar to, I would say, how you, you first pick up a pen. You know, everyone's grip's different. And if you watch some dart players, and you know, when we've been doing exhibitions and we do the sign-ins, you watch them, you go, oh, wow. That's so similar to their to their grip. It's scary. 85. The odds compilers couldn't separate these two. They went five to six each of two. Yeah, I think that's pretty fair. It's got all three written all over 140. <laughs> Danny Require we haven't had one today. We haven't had a big either. It's been... A couple of four twos and a couple of four ones. Fifty-four. Big difference then you might come into play by the end of Wednesday's play, but I always feel that Monday is about just getting into the group. Now, double Game tennis found by line. Ben Rob. Ben Rob. That is a twelve-dot break back. Yeah, it's almost like it's a, a bit of a feeling out day, isn't it? You you sort of take a look Third at your opponents, get, first. get used on. to the environment, get get used to the mentality of. We're so used to playing knockout darts to, to be able to get beat and then go, okay, you know, it doesn't 93. matter. Or, or not to overanalyze everything. Yeah, I tend to put Group A in the same sort of scenario as four rounds of golf. The first couple of days, you just don't want to be cut. You want to make sure that you can make a move when it comes to Tuesday. 100. And then by Wednesday, you've got to be in the early reckonings within striking distance. You can't be too far behind. Yeah, you've got to be in position, haven't you? 55. Within four points, you have yeah. to be. If you're six behind, it's very unlikely you're going to make the top spot. 81. But the beauty of coming in in Group A is if you don't make it, you get another bite of the cherry. 96. Depends There's... what your engine's like. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I wonder what kind of engine there would be in a big rig. Ooh. 91. Depends what you're lugging, I guess. Yeah. It's one of the biggest ones that are going cross-country, like the ones I've seen in the Red road Dust train. in Australia. Yeah, yeah, the road train. Yeah. 58. Spend your yeah. Two, two or three rigs at the back and full of timber sometimes and some other sort of materials. 100. I don't think it'd be a Leyland Daff over there or something like that. It'd be a, something a bit more substantial. Big V12 or something. 60. Ben, you great leg from Ben. 36. Get back up that 12 data. Game shot and on the There is the leg. finishing product. They give us our second 17 data of this match. You fancied, Mace, that. The second round of matches would give us improved first. stuff. Game on. It isn't letting us down. No. No. Raymond Smith lifted his game by 99. five points in terms of averages. Ben Rob averaged 85 in his opening match, and he's averaging close to 95 here. 134. One thing I haven't seen from Ben this morning is his remarkable necklace. That he wore at the Worlds last year. He might be wearing it underneath the shirt, but it was so broad, it almost looked like a medal. 100. But I think it had some sort of uh, indigenous meaning as well. I think it was made from a certain material. I, I always like to see things that are a little bit different. And I like people to get on the stage and show us who they are. Get a great 140. insight. Getting an insight into Ben Rob's ability here. Here's his average almost touches a ton. Danny's going along quite nicely, averaging over 91. 47. Ben, you require 127. at the moment. Can we have a bullseye to end a leg? 
95. No, good leave. Danny, you require one it's a perfect two words if you miss it. Good leave. I was just about to say the only two words that you didn't want to hear from us right there are good then hit. Then you require 32. So for 3-1. Two fours on the other side. 28. Danny a chance requires missed. 73. Did not see that coming. 14 for tops for a steal. Game shot. Oh, the ball it's a play. good hit. Danny Van Tribe. 2-2. Two, two. You said it might be 4-3, miss. You might be right. But if we look at what Danny Van Tribe Fifth did eight, to throw first. in his first Game venture on. to us in Super Series 1, Admittedly, in a, a different place. He played 27 games that week. 140. He, he has won half of his games, which is not bad, but we tend to pigeonhole the elite Super Series players at around 60%. 140. He had a running average over 88 and a personal best average of just shy of 102. So there's a lot to admire about that. 60. I just wonder what he's going to need. World Championship wise and tour wise, the next couple of years. Do you know who's playing at the World Cup? 46. Steve Beaton. Ooh. On debut. Yeah, that's not nice. You're playing the most experienced World Championship player ever. Yeah. Interesting call from the draw for Danny Van Trip. Yeah, and he's 85. Have to, ben, you require 161. Have to find a, a real solid game to. Be competitive in that one against Beaton, who just started towards the back end of the season. It looked like he was going to lose his card. Uh, he went on a run to a final of a, a pro tour, didn't he? And one thing Danny must be aware of, and if he watches this back sometime today, 60. this is advice, Danny. Then you require 20 Steve's going to like your pace. Looks like Ben Rob is enjoying it too, Game because he's 3 2 up. Play. Ben Rob. Good stuff from the big rig. I wonder what the average height is of the players here today. <laughs> it's probably at least three inches taller than me. Six leg, it's Danny to throw first. Game on. Well, I like that from Ben Rob. He could have carried over the disappointment of giving away leg four. But his response is a 14 dart hold. There is a lot to like about this man's performance so far in this one. 140. And that is an eighth 140, twice as many as his opponent. 60. I reckon if Ben Rob was to make it on tour, you know, he'd be a bit of a pin up. He's a good looking boy. He's a big lad. I think the ladies might take to him a bit. I don't think he'd be intimidated by anybody either. <laughs> 60. Good luck with that one. Yeah, I get the feeling there could be a. If you were to put a, a really good Southern 100. Hemisphere crew together. You could have Devin Peterson and a bit of Damon Hatter. Because Ben's very good friends with Damon. 141. I ben, you could be a Southern Hemisphere crew next year, potentially, if these guys make it to the tour. But it's 25. It doesn't get to 60. With the Southern Hemisphere against the rest of the world team event, couldn't you? Oh, that's, that sounds fun. Well, Danny's left himself on a bogey, which means that Ben will come back for a third 4-2 scoreline in a row. Game and that's exactly what he gets. And the match, he, ben like Raymond Smith, has found his way to four points. And it was a brilliant performance because he's the first person this week to break the three figures. There you have it. His checkouts, really solid at 36%. And funnily enough, that's exactly what it had in his previous game. So he's been really... Really consistent, but what are we seeing from the people losing? We're seeing them get 100% on the doubles. They're just not scoring heavily enough. We're going to come back after this break. It's going to be Jeroen Mir against Adam Atkinson, trying to keep the pace.
Welcome back. Well, it is time to get Chris Mason's ace analysis on what's happened so far. We'll start with the, the last match because it was a, a really good performance, wasn't it, from Ben Robb? Yeah, a brilliant average, our first 100 plus average of the day so far, and I don't think it'll be our last, 100.35, and did it very comfortably, and that included missing a few darts at doubles in a leg that he should have won, so it actually could have been, or should have been, more than that 100.35. Tidy enough from Danny, 87.54, and yeah, again, we've seen someone not miss a dart at a double, but they're just, that's the only opportunities they're getting, and they're taking them out. But yeah, impressed with him and Raymond Smith so far. Both raised their game, both on debut, of course, and both put big numbers on top of their opening match averages. Yeah, we haven't seen a game go to a last leg decider yet. Are we seeing uh, a kind of hierarchy develop already in this group? You, you'd say that it'd be a bit early, but I think we are. I think I think both both Raymond and Ben look comfortable enough in their early matches, but you, you looked at it and thought, hang on a minute, these guys have uh, got a little bit more in the locker, and that's what they've produced. So it's up to the rest of the field now to try and gather them in a little bit. Yeah, well, next up, it's two players who didn't win their opening match in Jerome Miok and Adam Atkinson. Uh, Atkinson took out this 97 finish against Raymond Smith, and we're going to see a 160 from Miok in his very first leg at the Super Series as well. Both players showing flashes of promise? Yeah, absolutely. Both look a little bit nervous. Um, and, of, and, of course, Adam using a new set of darts. They are the same, but when they're new out of the box, we've discussed this before, they just... They don't quite have that war in grip level, uh, and especially when you don't use a dart, that some of these darts nowadays, are they've got some hellish grip on them. They're a fairly smooth looking dart, so you just want to get them bedded in a little bit, and that, that will come throughout the week, I'm sure. Uh, Jerome, he, he looks, he, he looks uh, with that 160 says it all, so we know what he's capable of, and again, it's just who's settling quicker, and it's the two more experienced TV players that have settled the quickest of the, of, of the group of six. Right, you've seen them all play. A quick prediction early for the Group A winner. I think it's down to, to Robert Smith. We'll see if uh, Paul Nicholson agrees. I'm sure he'll tell us as he guides us through this next match between Miok and whoever he's playing. <laughs> I completely <laughs> forgot. <laughs> Danny. Uh, Atkinson, there we go. Back to Paul. Thanks, Murph. And just to keep the mystery going, I'm not going to tell you who I... Th oh, actually, no, I'll tell you. I think Raymond Smith is the man to beat so far. Even though we've seen the best performance so far from Ben Robb, that 100.35 average, the best of the session so far. An excellent performance from the Kiwi, but my tip is Raymond Smith for the week. The Pooley, Adam Atkinson, back on the hockey now. A representative of the ADC, of course. He'll be looking to have uh, a better performance than his first one, where he averaged 83.93. But I think the more Adam plays, first leg, it's the Adam more to he'll throw get into this this Game week. On. His first full week campaign, of course. And this is Yaron's first campaign ever at the Motor Super Series. I would have Atkinson as the marginal favourite in this game. But they are playing catch-up. Neither player getting any points so far. And they would not like to be in the same boat as Kieran Tian going into round number three. That's for sure. Well, they actually go, Paul. 8 to 13, Atkinson. 6 to 5. For your own. Which is a little bit wider than I would have expected. Both on a bit of a losing run. That they'll want to... But right, well, one 59. of them in there. First game. Do you want to hear the good news or the bad news, Mace? Both. Right, so the good news is that we've actually heard from Damon Hedder, from Gordon Mathers, and some other people in Australia. The bad news is Gigi has texted us saying it's 30 degrees. <sighs> Thanks, Gigi. Yeah, it feels like minus 30 here. <laughs> well, not... Not in the uh, live lounge, but certainly outside. 97. Just to even things out, Damon Hetter's tweet us saying he's on his way back from Scotland, so we know that it's not 30 degrees where he is, unless he's got the car heating up to full max. Anyway, Damo, good luck at the Worlds, and we'll see you there. Have a lovely, lovely Christmas and New Year in Australia, uh, Gigi. But they're not the only people who got in touch with us. John is following us from Diamond Creek, Melbourne. See, there's a great name for a place. Diamond yeah. Creek. See, the, the, the creativity in their places. 
I live in Tiverton. It's hardly 45. the same, is it? I live in Hayward's Heath. It, it just sounds middle class, doesn't it? Well, I'm saying nothing. <laughs> 100. I'd rather say I live in Diamond Creek. Sounds like I'm in a movie Ma with Paul Hogan. Matches the Audi. <laughs> oh, if only I could rebuff that. Oh, well, Jeroen's got the first crack at check out here. Started with a 160 in his first leg. In his first game of the day. He might get this one on double 14. 93. Adam, you require 85. Darting deja vu there. With the ton plus out. Yeah, of course, it was a busy weekend. In Scotland. 65. Right, City Masters, which Jerome, you, required you were playing in that Jose de Sousa went on Game to win. Shot on the first leg. At least, she lost to, at least she lost to the winner, pal. Oh, I, I knew you were going to say it, and that makes me feel so much better. He yeah, beat me in the quarterfinals. Second and I leg, it's Jerome to throw dreadful. first. Game on. But I did beat Jamie Clark, and it was good to see Jamie, who played in the Super Series last year, but he's... Yep. He's on tour for next year, so if Jamie's watching along, good luck for next year. 134. Yeah, well, we mentioned the ADC, which is where we discovered Adam Atkinson. Actually, I got a little bit of news from Carl Redden on Twitter about the ADC from the weekend. Uh, Kevin McDyne won the opening weekend of the darts, uh, the amateur darts circuit campaign at the Northumberland Masters. And... That's a tremendous win, considering what yeah. Kevin's been through the last couple of weeks. He lost his fall. He was laid to rest last Wednesday, and our condolences are sent to the entire McDyne family. But just as his dad would have wanted, he's continued to play, and he's playing well. Yeah, absolutely. That's a, the one thing that came out of it. His dad would have, wouldn't have wanted him to... 39. ...to not play. He was his biggest supporter. 171 he won a, he won this year, hasn't he? Adam Atkinson on the ADC. Yeah, just put that into perspective just for a second. Do you know anybody else who has won 11 times this year in any tour? 97. That is quite the You're achievement only require 138. For the well, it wasn't a tour, but it was a it was a, it was a combination of playing in BDO ranking events and and the sort of 500 pounders to a thousand pounder opens. I won 30 in a season once. Just for everybody's uh, viewing pleasure, Chris is looking quite 66. smug. <laughs> and <laughs> rightfully so. <laughs> yeah, that included the one of, one, one of my favourites, but well, I won the Somerset Open, but I saw one come on in the same the second leg. season, me and, and that was always was always tough. There was always an, an array of quality players, not just from Wales, but third leg. It's Adam to throw it first. To, you know, those on. events would attract four, five, six hundred players. It was brilliant back then. Yeah, certain events just live in the memory, don't they? One of the best things about traversing the world and, and seeing 56. how different events are run. I've been part of the Northeast Circuit since the late 90s, seeing great tournaments like the Northumberland Open. 180! Well, we were talking about this not long ago when we were looking at tournaments and history and we come across one that I can't even remember playing in, the Welsh <laughs> Classic. I beat Andy Jenkins in the final. I was like, I can't, I just can't remember it. No, just say that again, just in case Andy missed it. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure that'll go down well. Well, this game is going down well for your own. He's 100. playing vastly better than his previous match. Let us just flash that up while we can, because we haven't had a great deal of maximums today either. But I think we're starting to figure out that this game, well, this group, it's got a bit of depth. 126. Yeah, and you can some, sometimes be inspired by the other performances by players around you, and I think that's what's happening here. I think 100. one of the biggest things about this group that I'm seeing is that Raymond Smith and Ben Robb are dragging each other along, and 
if your own Miak is going to struggle at any point today, he's got some comfort knowing that his good pal Danny Van Tripe's in the room. One hundred and thirty-three. In fact, the two lone wolves are pretty much Atkinson and Tian. Yeah. And we're playing in the UK. Game oh, the now third, we've got a ball finish, and that's for a twelve, a one-two-one one out. Just when Atkinson looked like he was going to get back in the match. Well, that's 16, 15, and 12, to throw average first. of Game on. nearly 105, Paul. This is special. Three out of four on the doubles. Yeah, not bad at all. If you look at 43, the reputation of your own. I was looking at this list a few days ago, and I thought, I've seen him on results sheets. I've seen him getting wins. But in order to really find out what someone can do, you have to be... Watching them from close quarters for a sustained period of time. If we're going to learn about players, this is the perfect place to do it. Yeah, exactly what the players say themselves. If you if, ninety-seven, well, I would say this is being created by players for players, isn't it? It's it's just giving the player that perfect environment. I think you may have just stumbled upon the new catchphrase of the Super Series by players 87. for players. That's what it is. That's what it all boils down to, giving them an opportunity to not only blossom and evolve as players and either rescue their career 96. or kickstart their career. They've also got an opportunity to earn money that can keep them on the tour. Or, in you know, a case of maybe someone like Conan Whitehead, he could... You know, use that 20... 121. Well, with the, the appearance, when it's over 30,000, if you, you win a week and then win a Champions Week, it's a massive amount of money taking you forward. 95. So much so, it put you in the what, the top 60-odd in the, in the Pro Tour. It's already had a 1-2-1 one, one on the ball. Why not a 170 to finish the match? Hence my feelings that players will be making other choices come January with regards to Hughes 170. score. I'm not going to get that dream finish for your own, but Atkinson has been backed into a corner. We may see Adam players turn up, play one day and then go home. It all very much depends what you want to do. Now, we know exactly what Adam wants to do. He wasn't 100% what he no. was going for there. But he had the presence of mind to stop. 85. Jerome require 127. Well, to finish off, a stunning performance. Trouble 19. Oh, just next door. And again, looking at Jerome's darts there, that typical standard straight barrel, minimal grip. 86. Adam, you require 20. It's probably the best idea of a darts experiment you can have this week if everybody's using the same Change kit. on the fourth leg. Well, Adam he's not going to be bageled, and we still haven't got a 4-0. Not that we want 4 nils. We want to see plenty of darts, but Absolutely. your own fifth leg is going to have to first. find Game the win on. by some other method. I do get asked, and I was asked throughout the couple of weeks that I played what darts I'm using, and they are literally... The, the Winmore Firefox are straight out of the box. They're, they're nothing fancy. They're just a... 97. Just a really nice, well-balanced, well-manufactured dart. 134. Only about 25 quid. Bargain. And the beauty of that, you see, if I want another set, I just order another set. Are you trying to somehow say that they would fit very snugly into a Christmas stocking? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, get yourself a standard set of nylon stems from normal size and normal thickness of flights. Now, what your own is actually using is the, the Japanese branded flight that is molded and it pops onto uh, a plastic stem which has little catches just at the end of the prongs and it stops the flight from going any further. They are very, very 121. precise. Adam's all old school with the with the rings. This will work. And that's his second maximum of this match. This is the first time today that we've had two maximums in a match from a player. 
You were actually at the factory recently, looking at how they're doing these new molded flights, weren't you? Yeah, fascinating 90. process. You're on your I actually saw as well something else that I would love to talk about, but the 147 is the most important thing right now. Game and it's all shot gone match, right for your own milk. What a finish. That's his third ton plus checkout of the day. And they've all been biggies. A 1-2-1, one, one, a 147, and a 160. He is a good finisher, all right. And he's just gone and hit the second consecutive three-figure average of the day. That was a brilliant performance from the Dutchman. We might be thinking that Jeroen Mierk may be a contender if he keeps playing like that. That's two rounds down. We'll take a short breather. And when we come back, it's Tian looking for his first points. He's up against Ben Robb, the big rig. Welcome back. Well, it was magical Miok before the break. A stunning performance from the Dutchman, Jerome Miok, who produced his highest ever uh, average on record with that 101.26. He hit a 147 in there and a 121 as well. Three ton plus checkouts for the day from him. And he got the better of Adam Atkinson for his first win, having lost to Ben Robb earlier on. I will take a look now at the table for the first time, as all the players have played a couple of games, and you can see it's a couple of wins for the two players who've travelled from down under, Raymond Smith and Ben Robb, both on four points. Uh, the two Dutchmen on two, and Kieran Tian and Adam Atkinson yet to win a match. So Tian in action against Robb now defeats for the Irishman, despite taking out a nice 111 checkout against Raymond Smith, but he lost to both Smith and Danny Van Tripe. But Ben Robb, well, he's won both of his matches, defeating the Dutch duo of Miok and Van Tripe, who he beat with the aid of this 140 finish. And good stuff from him. Right, I better just turn round now and double check who is playing after my uh, little mistake in the previous one. But yes, it is Ben Robb and uh, Kieran Tian. And Kieran Tian, well, he's looking to turn his day around, isn't he? Yes, he is, Murph. 
But round three starts with these two. And they're all trying to catch the Oceanic pair at the top, both on four points. Uh, but we have two players who are yet to score points so far. Tian is one of them, the most experienced player in Super Series before we began. In fact, he's played now 134 games. And he still remains on 63 wins. So his win percentage is just under 50%. Ben Robs is 100%. So, so far, so good for the big rig. Yeah, can he make it? Three out of three. He's going, going along very nicely at the moment. He's the four to six favorite for this one. 11 to 10. Kieran Tihan. Like I say, you, you don't panic too early, but you just don't want to feel first like you're Kieran to no longer first. connected to that Game group. On. A stunning performance from Jerome in the last game. 101.26 the average. Four out of five on the doubles and those two beautiful ton plus outs. I know we saw a little smattering of 100. plus from Jerome Mirk in that first game of the day. But as far as game two, I didn't expect that. I think that well, is a bit of an indication as to what he can do. Well, we were looking at his numbers in terms of official events. So... You know, events falling under whichever of the many governing bodies that's around now. 91. And it's 95.39. I'm sure in, you know, maybe local comps or league play may have averaged higher, but... 121. That's, that's, that's by some distance. That's, you know, nearly six points. And that's an indication that he feels comfortable or more comfortable in this environment. And we're getting the best out of him. We've seen that before. From many a player. I heard the word professional 94. from Danny Van Tripe when he was interviewed earlier and when he talks about that he's all about the feeling of where you are dark 45. players love a throw that feels good plenty of space that's exactly why it was designed this way and just to give you an indication of the levels 60. that we can get from Kiranti and his personal best is 106.24 and he is nowhere near that today so far. In fact, he 42. hasn't averaged over Kieran 80 yet. So lots to find for the young man from the Cork area. But of course, he's so experienced now in this format that he won't panic. 96. I don't think you ever see any panic from T. And he's your typical Irish dart player who doesn't give a great deal away. 134. Very much in the Kieran same vein as Keen Barry and Steve Lennon, who act exactly the same if they hit a 170 check it or hit Game three for a scoring leg. visit but Kieran Tian. there's Tian getting his first leg of this match that's more like it 17 dart protection of his own throw second leg it's Ben to throw first game on you're on from the same area of Ireland as our good friend John O'Shea who might be watching along today who has finally relinquished his World Masters trophy after a period of three years on the mantle. I bet the mantle piece is probably thinking, oh, finally I can breathe. But well, I've got to ask you a question about that because I'm, I'm dying to know this. 57. I was never in a position where I had to hand a trophy back. It must be really difficult for someone to do that, like a John O'Shea. I know Glenn Duran had to hand back the Lakeside trophy. Did you ever have to 80. do that? No, and I wouldn't have given it back either. Um, certainly not to those idiots that pretty much brought what was left of the BDO down to its knees. Uh, I, I, I want to see evidence that they own the trophy. I'm a, I'm a great believer that, you know, the inception of that tournament was the what year prior to the Wimmore becoming the longest running sponsor of an event. And from... People who were around the sport at that time, that's when that magnificent trophy was introduced. And I'm pretty sure it didn't come out of the BDO coffers at the time. I mean, what are they going to do with it anyway? You know, if, they, if they valued our sport, that would have been given straight back to the WDF, which is what John O'Shea was going to do. And that historical piece of silverware continues. It's one of the most magnificent 58. trophies in, in world darts. But Genuinely there is. There you go. And you've got to be someone to lift that thing. And I never even got to touch it. But then again, I, I always had this rule that I wouldn't want to touch a trophy that I couldn't win. Same. 
I had a good look at it. But John Walton uh, made sure I'm going to get my hands on it. Don't know, still don't know how that happened to this day, but 55. it did. Good morning, John. Ben, you're yeah. required 32. I was two up, one up. Missed double 18 and Game didn't get another the go at the double player. to win the match. Ben Robb. Good bounce back from Ben Robb. Well, we've all been watching Third a bit of football over the last couple first. of weeks and Game some of the on. names in the in Qatar have been taking a bit of practice, but Ben Robb does not take a great deal of practice. Well, Only seven letters. On my, way dry, on, my, on my way down here, I was listening to... Uh, the Netherlands against USA, and it was interesting to hear Nopert and Klassen. I was, <laughs> I was not sure that I was tuning in to, to something different. Good performance last night, though, has to be said from the England team. I'll tell you what, great performance by England, but also by great radio commentator Jim Prout. But what a call he had in that 3-0 victory for England. Great, great work from Jim. One of the very best. 96. It's not. Slight best. segue, I know, but how good is Jude Bellingham? Yeah. My 19 word. 19 years of age. Wow. What you don't have to be that experienced in a sport to be elite. 131. Jude Bellingham is a, is a perfect example of that. And Michael Van Gruen at 17, winning the World Masters that we were just talking about. Josh Rock, World Youth Champion, 21 years of age. It's scary. 180. That's what sport gives us, isn't it? Yep. Sport is about giving yourself joy, but the thing as well is that them doing this gives other people joy too, which at this time of year is still very important. Oh, you can see how much he wanted that one. He was looking for the 3, 12, 52. and 6. Yeah, I was very Kieran much like that watching Rock at the Grand Slam. I was just sat there with a big smile on my face knowing that, that the future of our sport is in safe, safe hands. Like the safe hands of Pickford last night. Ooh, double top. Game and that the is line. gorgeous from Tian. Where is he picking this up from? Averaging 77, then 79. This is more Ball like it's been to throw 92. On. This is more like it from... I can't quite call him a young man because he's about 8 foot tall. 92. Honestly, if this guy was, was a basketballer, the Houston Rockets would have him as number one pick for the NBA. He might even be really good at the old Gaelic football 41. as a ruckman. Imagine him steaming down the wind with, with the, the ball bouncing off his foot. I actually played darts on that on a Thursday night with a fella that plays uh, basketball. Big loop. 49. As you can imagine, he is, <laughs> he is a bit of a unit. It's funny you mentioned this morning that he, he might have grown. Well, when I 100. first saw Kieran this morning, I thought, he do look a bit taller. And then I actually looked at what shoes I was wearing. I thought, am I wearing flatter shoes than the last time I saw you? I didn't think I was. Well, this one. 89 averages. Oh, the pair. 98. I feel like this one's up for grabs. You almost suspect that this is the standard you are going to get. The 87 to 92. But 59. to have no missed doubles in the first three legs, that takes some doing. Yeah. We've seen a lot of that today. Uh, it's usually been on the, well, the player on the end of defeat. 98. It just shows you that when they are getting their chances, they're being taken. And just to give everybody watching on Sporty Stuff TV this morning, 140. as we get close Kieran to lunchtime, if you do want to be here on Saturday night to watch the week seven finals, by all means, get in touch with us on dartshop.tv and figure out your post England France entertainment. Then you require 68. Yeah, what a, what a sporting day that could be. Watching the football and then coming in and watching the darts. Game show on the fourth leg. Again, ben Rock. on the doubling. They've had four attempts at doubles, four hit between them. Fifth leg, it's Kieran to throw first. Game on. Yeah, if you do want to come, dartshop.tv. Tickets are absolutely free. No cheaper than spoons. Get that in there. 140. And don't forget, if you want to come and watch the World Seniors 
Championships, which is in Nine February. Ideal Christmas present. Tickets start at just ten pounds for that. Again, dartshop.tv. I will be making 60. an appearance. Practice has started. Hopefully, more than one appearance. Well, that's the plan. That is indeed the plan when it comes to the World Championship. I mentioned that Ben Robb's got Mickey Mansell. Well, correct me if I'm wrong, but that's the very first game of the tournament. Yep. I know how that feels to play the very first game of the tournament, and it's nerve-wracking because 97. you don't want to be the first person out. It's a very long World Championship if you're back home before the first weekend of the tournament. 133. Well, that's why a lot of players don't particularly or are not particularly fans of Christmas because if you you're still in you as much as you try to do that whole family thing your mind's elsewhere or you're stuck down in 46. London. 46. Then you require if you're out, 132. It's, uh, that Christmas dinner doesn't taste quite so nice even if Gordon Ramsay cooked it. Yeah, it's it's genuinely a horrible experience. Ooh, it's a ball. 92. And a groan. Jeremy good leave again. 158. <laughs> He's just constantly doing it, isn't he? Just in case. I'll, I'll miss it by a distance, but I'll get the right number. But it is the first start missed at a ben double in the match. 40. And a break of throw opportunity for Ben Robb. That's a long way off. Game that shot on the fifth leg. That is ben Robb. the 14 dart break. I think Kieran Tian is starting to feel like that infamous England rugby defender that tried to stop Jonah Lomu. He's falling backwards. Beautifully done. And he joins Jeroen Mierch in being the second player to have got multiple 180s in a match. And... Ben Robb is maintaining a very high level of performance from round two through to round three, and he's not missing. 100. We're talking about a player who has a big stage win over Simon Whitlock in a World Series event. If that doesn't prove his pedigree, I don't know what does, really. 96. He's starting to play so well. He might not want this match to end, but I've got a really 100. big point to make about this format because some of these players, three in fact in this group, are going to the World Championship next week. They're going to be playing a lot of set play. Best of five legs per set. This is a lot of short matches, which is getting you tuned into short format yeah, they constantly. Could, yeah, they could be breaking breaking this down into what effectively is set set play and just saying right this is just a set albeit a, a set that's best of seven and, and apart from the traditional best of five well we haven't had a four three today so nobody's 16. taking it seven legs so then it might as well be 40. best of five double ten it's been good to him and Game it is again shot. ben rob Ben just Rob. will not be defeated today. That's three wins from three. And he is setting the pace himself now and setting alight the Motor Super Series with that massive Kiwi smile and a lot of joy coming his way for the man in green. 93.73 the average. The checkouts were excellent at four from eight. And Tian, even though he gets 100% on his doubles for the third match in succession, that's happened to the person losing. Incredible stuff. But the middle match of the day will be Jeroen Mioch, who had a great performance in round two. He's up against Raymond Smith, who's undefeated. Don't miss that next.
Welcome back. So Rob leads the race at the moment. That's after winning his first three matches on his Modus Super Series debut. Uh, the most recent of them, that 4-2 victory against Kieran Tian, who hasn't missed a double in his last two games, but still is without a win on Monday in Group A. 50% for Rob, 93.73 the average. Really good stats from him. And he goes top of the table in the early stages of this group. But Raymond Smith will be looking to respond when he plays in the next match. The two Dutch players with one win apiece and Adam Atkinson and Kieran Tian yet to get off the mark. So S Raymond Smith, as I mentioned, has had back-to-back -back wins himself already today. He's seen off both Atkinson and Tian, both with 25 checkouts, having missed the ball for the match just before, but cleaning up the remainder very effectively indeed. As for Miok, well, he has been the chief of the checkouts so far. He's taken out a hat-trick of three-figure finishes, a 160 in defeat to Rob, that 1-2-1 in beating Atkinson, which he wrapped up with a fabulous 1-4-7 finish. Raymond Smith, though, is looking for his own hat-trick, a hat-trick of victories to respond to Rob's perfect start. Let's see if he can do it against that chief of checkouts in Jerome Miok. Paul Nicholson and Chris Mason will guide you through each start. The chief of checkouts. That's a really interesting one, isn't it? Well, Raymond Smith obviously pressed the snooze button. But he's there. And before we get started, I've just had an interesting tweet about the equipment of your own Miak, actually. Apparently, Mace, the point on his dart is longer than the barrel, which is something that you don't see very often. That's yeah, probably one of the reasons why you can see so much of the setup when the dart was in the board. But yeah, 48 millimeter points. Yeah, you just showed me a, a picture of them. They are, I don't think I've seen any that long before. Well, I've seen long points in my career, namely Justin Pipe, who had very yes. long points. But there's a good pal of mine from New South Wales, actually, who Raymond Smith probably knows, called Don Whittington. He used to use First the very leg, short, stumpy, bulbous Game barrel. On. But I think it was a 48 mil point, and it looked so weird. Yeah, I, I use a slightly longer point. I think it's 30 mil, but I think... Quite as um, 57. big as these ones. Let's have a look. I think they've been roughed up a lot as well. 122. You can see the discoloration. Don't know, I'm just about to order myself some now. <laughs> well, I can't believe we're at the halfway point already. 60. What a really good m morning's play we've had. We've had... A somewhat mystifying display of good doubling from the people who've been losing matches, haven't we, Miss? 140. Three. Two of them was Kieran Tierney. He's two from two on doubles twice, losing both matches, including the one last time out where he averaged 88.72. So he found another gear to his game, but alas, 60. wasn't enough against Ben Robb, who had another good average, 93.73, to go with his 85 and his 100.38. So when we talk a little bit later about how Tian's got no points, but his doubles checkouts are exceptional, it's because he's losing games and not getting enough chances. No, he's not creating enough. Or he's, well, there's one or two things. He's either not creating or he's just not getting an, an, enough opportunities. You can see from that camera angle just how much that point is protruding from the barrel because... Well, it's uh, actually past his fingers. And it, the advantage of that as well is that when the dart, when the point hits the board, it makes the opportunities for deflections less, doesn't it? That's the idea 66. behind the longer points. Full top. 46. Chance for the guru. Drone to require 44. Oh, it's interesting. Double four. Game he can do the whatever he leg. wants, can Raymond the guru. Smith. He's exceptional at the game of darts. Oh, he's got to be good with a nickname like the guru. <laughs> Second leg, it's Jerome that to throw movie called the guru? Game Absolute. on. Absolute. I have. Awful movie. 
with Mike Myers. One of the only things he's done in his life that didn't work. This is working. 180. Well, funnily enough, I don't know what the walk on music is for Raymond Smith, but there's a very famous song in the early 90s called, uh, it was by Guru Josh. But he can't 55. have it. 55. Do you want to know why? Because Darius Labanowskis has already got it. 43. He's got a real mean look about him as Raymond, you know. He used to wear glasses. He used to have a bit more follicles on the top of the bonnet, but yeah, he's got a bit of a mean look about him, but he's not like that. It's easy to look at a player when you don't know them very well and you think, oh, he looks a bit fierce. He's a puppy dog. He's just a really deep thinker, very articulate. It'd be really good to have a sit down and have a chat with him and just talk about the game with him because he knows a lot. One hundred and eighty. Yeah, it'd be just interesting to see where his his game is right now. One hundred and forty. Well, I went to my usual very reliable source for walk on music for players, and I'm disappointed to say I I have nothing further to add because he doesn't appear to have one, but I'm sure he does. One hundred. Drone, you require eighty. In my uh. In my records. Well, he's had a shot at this earlier today and he missed it. 40. This time he Ray misses it high. The last time was low. When he's missed more doubles in this match than he missed it in, in his entire match last time out when he beat Atkinson 4 1. He was 4 out of 5. 32. Beautiful. Game shot on the second wow. leg. You Raymond just Smith. knew that was going. If you needed proof that Raymond Smith is a world class dart player, You've Third just seen it. Throw first. Game on. He's got two maximums in this game. He's 2 0 up, throwing 32 darts. I have no doubt in my mind at all that if this guy was 100. on tour, he'd do damage. Yeah, absolutely. And his, his numbers are backing that up. He's had a, a three game 100. gap in between matches where you could go a little stale or just come off the top slightly to be he's getting better and better now, i'd be interested to know if any of the players especially what we were talking about whether they're almost, especially the ones playing in the world where they are just simply breaking this down into almost a, a set play type approach 140 i know one guy who should be watching this that's carol sedler mm. the opponent of raymond smith in round one and that is mouth watering well in, in fact there's there is some sort of similarity 100. because when you give advice to players who are making their debuts in the world over that course and distance is to break, it, break those sets down into matches and just sort of win those sessions, which is exactly what you've got to do here. Yeah, practice for what you're about to do. It's a bit like approaching the World Grand Prix. You practice a lot of double in. One the world. Drone, you require 126. You'll practice these finishes most practice sessions. But those long points have got in his way this time. 86. And is Smith about to double down on ton plus finishes for a 3 0 lead? And you see, he's trying to lead double 16 a lot. Oh, he's recovered though. And he's found it again. Raymond Smith. This is very, very impressive. Back to back, ton plus finishes. Didn't panic. Fourth leg, it's Jerome to throw first. After slipping Game in on. to the trub before, but the advantage, it left that double 16, which he's having a bit of a love affair with right now. He's three out of three on the doubles. 100. I don't want to tempt fate or anything, but later on in round four, Ben Robb against Raymond Smith, Game 10. I think that could be tasty. 140. Yeah. Yeah, that could have absolutely everything. He mentioned that dip that Jeroen Mirk has when he approaches the off. He tends to almost nod a little bit towards his waist and then recoils. Maybe it's something he does and he doesn't really recognise it. It's just natural to him. Yeah, I quite, I quite like it. It's, it's just a, it's a routine to make sure he feels like, there we go, and then comes up and boom, he locks into position. Do you know who that reminds me of? Nigel Hayden. 
190. He's got a bit of a lean in, hasn't he? Yeah, he, he leans so far that his, his back is like the letter C. Nice guy, though. Nigel Hayden, former England international. 100. Join your require 142. Yeah. Stay there. Should have stayed there. Agreed. It was begging to be followed in that. 130. There's the proof. Range require and what's he done by missing it? Giving Raymond Smith a chance to win the match right here. Unfortunately, it can't be done on double 16, but it can be done on the ball. One hundred and five. So close. Join the wire for four eight. out of four and four nil. Madhouse six, and that should be Ready that. Oh look, 25. Raymond Smith on twenty-five to win a match for the third time in succession. This one's going to miss high. Game oh. shots and the match. Why did I say Raymond that? Because he's Smith. getting better as the day goes on. The average is very impressive. Again, incrementally improving. 98.56, 80% on the doubles. Two ton plus finishes. What more could you possibly ask for on debut? But what he's got next, he's got Ben Robb, who's also undefeated. So that will be an incredible match to watch in match 10. But Danny Van Tripe and Adam Atkinson will close round three after this short break. Welcome back. Well, the dude from Down Under, they mean business today, don't they, on their debuts at the Modus Super Series. Ben Rob Brules and then Raymond Smith responds. And how did he respond as well? A fantastic performance to beat Jerome Miok 4-0. Look at that, defying 100 average, five missed darts at double for Miok, but Smith was four out of five and once again won the match by taking out 25. That's three times he's done that in as many matches today. A high checkout of 108 and a really solid display from Smith once again. Now he's going to take on Ben Robb in a couple of games' time in a tussle at the top of the table, the pair of them, with six points from a possible six. That will change and there's a chance in the next match for Danny Van Tripe to put some pressure on because he is going to take on Adam Atkinson. Uh, it's been a win and a defeat so far for Van Tripe, DVT, 
uh, playing a couple of matches and, as I said, winning one, losing one. This 89 checkout in defeat to Ben Robb, having beaten Kieran Tian earlier. Adam Atkinson, though, despite some flashes of what he can do, the ADC qualifier is without a win so far. He's suffered a couple of 4-1 defeats against a pair of premier performances. And by the way, if you're wondering how you can qualify through the ADC system, then sign up at their website. It's uk.dartcircuit.com. You can enter the amateur competitions if you think you have got what it takes to mix it at the Modus Super Series. That's the way to do it. It's at Dart Circuit on Twitter as well. Uh, if you think you're good enough, let your darts do the talking. And doing the talking for us in this one is Chris Mason and Paul Nicholson. Yes, thanks, Murph. An interesting day so far, dominated by the Aussie and the Kiwi, who you eloquently mentioned are going to do battle after this. So you don't want to miss that. But Danny Van Tripe, who started his day with a 4-1 victory, is now, believe it or not, four points behind the top two. Adam Atkinson would love to be in that position post this match. But there's one really interesting thing that we can bring up at this point, and it is something that Kieran Tian, who plays his next match in match 11 against Atkinson, it's something he's done, and it's something that Graham Usher did last week as well. You don't have to win Group A to win the week. It's just maybe a little bit easier. First though, it gets Danny to throw first. Game on. Absolutely, off. I am fascinated by that tie coming up next between Ben Robb and Raymond Smith and just want to get a little bit of 58 foresight into what we can expect you get the feeling that before Adam hit the scene he worked very hard on this technique 99 there are lots of people who would buy that action from him that's for sure he is very much a Focus on every single dark kind of player, whereas 45. Danny is very much a feel player. Yeah, yeah. One one looks, and this is in a, a positive way, very manufactured from the fundamentals from the ground up. While the other is the other looks very much like a, a player that's just picked a set of darts up, started throwing, and, and found the game relatively easy. So what you're saying is that Danny Van Chape is almost annoying. <laughs> yeah. Is that he's could just pick up the darts and throw anything he wants. Yeah. Whereas possibly. Adam looks like the kind of person who's had to put the work in, but that's just the game of darts, isn't it? You've heard that story about Gary Anderson, haven't you? Yeah, I'm, how much truth is in it, I, I don't know, but that's, <laughs> that's here and there. If you're not aware of that story, by the way, apparently Gary Anderson's first three darts ever were a 140. Yeah. Which 100. I suppose is... is Quite possible. Then there's the other 164. one about um, yeah, making one four seven breaks, which yeah, not having at all. That one's a lot less likely, in my opinion. Almost as unlikely as Sean Murphy's thing about him uh, holding one at one four seven, which I do believe and have seen, and hitting a nine darter. Well, I've seen one hundred. Adam, you're he playing one or one. He's got as many nine darters as I've got world titles. Let's put it that way. Well, that's a lovely first start from Adam. Searching for a break of throw Game to the start this leg. one off, and he has Adam in 14. Atkinson. And, and before anybody goes down that, we had that whole thing. It re every year it comes up, what's harder, a hole-in-one? Well, Second leg, it's a Adam lot of luck in a hole-in-one. I know Game players on. who play off 28 or whatever that have had an hole-in-one, and the ball initially has been going nowhere near the hole. Um, but yeah, the, I, I think a one four seven is way, way harder than 9 dollar. I'm with you. It's just the variables and the amount of shots involved. And, you know, we're on a nine darter every time we approach the board. You're not in snooker. So. 140. What's more, you've got to complete... All got three are incredibly difficult. And all three deserve... Haven't you got to complete 37 shots? 36. 36. Okay, so 36 shots compared to nine. Mm -hmm. And and you remember, all our shots, seven of them are at the same target. 80. You know, we're in, in snooker. It's just the amount of variables. And I, I'm a huge snooker fan, and 
60. Grew up in and around snooker clubs and, uh, and absolutely loved the sport. So, and obviously I love darts, but having been close to them and and actively played both, is, uh, uh, to be honest, I don't even think it's close. Unfortunately, the, the fast opinions come from people who do both or all three and have never come anywhere near doing any of them. But there you go. That's the modern world we live in when you're given a platform to spout absolute. 60. Yeah. It's a bit like comparing apples and oranges, isn't it? They're just two very different disciplines. Yep. And, or in the case of apples and oranges, two very different fruits. <laughs> both fruits. And both make a pie with both. Easy one. Maybe a sponge, I'm not sure. Stop it, you're making me hungry. It's lunchtime. And there is Danny Van Trike filling his boots. 180. If anybody does disagree with me, unfortunately for you, I don't do social media. Unlucky. Paul does. Get in contact with Paul. Oh, thanks for that. He loves it. At the asset, isn't it? You just put that into <laughs> 64. Danny requires 61. Can Danny delete leg number two in the best possible way? Double 14. Oh, Game that's just showing up, Danny. Leg. Danny Van Trier. Beautifully done. Doesn't bring a smile to his face, but he should be smiling. Well, it was a 14 dart breaker throw, and he's missed the double 18 for a 14 dart break. Don't back, like it's standing to in the first. end. Game on. Yeah, I do, I do do a bit of Instagram, but unfortunately, it's very little darts related content on there. Chris 180 Mason. Unlike Paul, I actually enjoy abuse, so you crack on that. Yeah, he's not wrong. I tend to just look at. Cute dogs and funny, funny animals and things like that. But if you're wondering why Adam Atkinson is called the Pooley, well, it's very 100. simple. He's from Hartlepool. And people from Hartlepool have a certain nickname, but I, I'm still not sure whether we can actually mention it because it involves the certain execution of one of uh, our favorite animals, isn't it? And yeah, it's, it's a bit brutal for a nickname. Can't exactly. How did the origins of that come about? What was, what's, the, what's the history behind it? Well, apparently, people in Hartlepool, way back, uh, crucified... Well, didn't crucify, that's the wrong word. They strung up a monkey because they thought it was a spy. 60. And since then, people in Hartlepool have been called monkey hangers. Didn't know that. Go. 60. You know, but see, I found out about the Geordie thing, but I didn't know about that one. Yeah, there's a lot of different nicknames for people from around the UK, and I think the, the origins make for very fascinating talk, but that's a particularly brutal one, which uh, I think people from Hartlepool are wishing to forget. Yeah, I love monkeys still. I lived in Gibraltar for long enough, so... One oh, it's another 180 for DVT, which I suppose would be another inappropriate nickname because it's a, an acronym for a condition that stops your blood from flowing through a certain vein. 94. Oh, blood flowing at the moment. 58. Right through to his fingertips, double two. He didn't mean to hit that. No. He almost got that one. Adam, you require 54. Well, Adam, the only thing you want to avoid here is that 54. He's going 14, surely. Game shot on the third leg. Well, Adam Atkinson. Third consecutive breaker throw in this one. Yeah, this is a decent Ball game. Adam to throw Atkinson's first. raised Game his up. level just a little bit towards the 89 level, which... I said earlier on today it would be competitive, but that was without the evidence of what Raymond Smith is now doing, what Ben Robb is continuing to do. 57. But what we do have is Adam on 100%. 135. Two from two. Now, that has not been a good <laughs> sign for people today. <laughs> it's not, as I was just about to say. That's not generally been a good look today, ask... Kieran Tian and well, ask Danny. 
because he got stranded on two from two in a full two to beat to Ben Rob, where he averaged 87 and a half. Oh, he's at it again. 121. He's got this lovely likelihood of, of sneaking the darts over each other, but he can also side stack and under stack, funny yep. enough. Yeah, they're quite flat, aren't they? Gives you options. I've got something that 60. I'd love to ask you about the darts of Adam Atkinson, because there's been something made this morning about the, the grip maybe being a little sharp. Does that... 61 mean that dart players who are using a new set who don't want to have that brand new feel is it advantageous for them to have some sort of file to maybe take the sharpness away no i think you've got to do i know a few players that do it the one that comes to mind is adrian lewis will get several AC3. sets out give them to craig and craig plays league and practices and he says look just crack on with them so you've always got that bedded in set it's just that Obviously, when, when, a, when they're tooled and they're put on the machine, there's a lot of oil involved. And although they, they wash them, they still just they just absorb that that bit of machining oil. And I, I always tend to sort of put them in some boiling water when they're new with a little bit of washing up liquid to really Danny totally Rikoi degrease 62. them and then, then try and wear them in a little bit. But it's just naturally getting them dirty. There's just that... 22. Lovely feel about them. Adam, you require 61. Atkinson has not missed a double yet. Van Tripe has missed four. That miss at tops could be very costly. Double 18. Twenty-five. He just needed another one. He was Danny gradually getting there. 40. He needed three at the double rather than just the two. Game shot on the fourth leg. Danny Van Try. That's four breaks of throw by my, by my reckoning, Paul. Yeah, you don't get many games where leg, it's Danny to throw everything first. is a break Game of on. throw. It's way more likely to have all legs with the throw. And in fact, today we have had no games go 85. the distance. Everything's been 4-0, 4-1 or 4-2. That's quite unusual. You know, I always like to have a little bit of a bit of a giggle, Mace. 59. We talked about a few different subjects today, but... Danny Van Trivey does not remind me of Biff Tannen. Back to the future. 100. Oh, yeah. Yeah, good show. I wonder if he's got a sports almanac in his back pocket. Ready to make his millions. Yeah, good show. By the way, Danny, that is a compliment. 80. Before you said it, I couldn't see it, but now I can't. Some things you just can't unsee. No, I'm not, not unseeing that. 59. I hope everybody can join us for the rest of the week because we've got an incredible amount of action coming your way. I've mentioned the participants in Group B later in the week. In Chaz Barstow, Peter Jackson, Prakash Jiwa. A lot of dotting experience there, but the long-awaited return to the Super Series of Fallon Sherrick will happen on Thursday morning from 9.30 a.m. alongside Dylan Slevin and Carl Wilkinson, as one of my commentary colleagues would say. All hail Wilkie. Just a bit of a cult hero yeah, in the Dan Barnsley area. Danny's on debut, isn't he? Yeah, Dylan Slevin is on, uh, sorry, yeah. on debut this week. 98. Danny Irishman, require 117. So. Great switch. Game and a beautiful take. Danny Van Well, Adam Atkinson, who had two shots at double 18 to lead three legs to one, is now looking at a deficit. Sixth yeah, leg. It's Adam right. to throw first. First to hold Game the throw on. in the match, coming in 15 darts, an 87 average. Yeah, I was just thinking about Danny because of wondering if the translation is, you know, Van Tripe. I'll have a look to see if Tripe's place, but. Because obviously with Dutch names, it's... 39. Van is from, so with someone like Raymond Van Barneveld, it's Raymond from Barneveld, which is a, a place in... 180! 180, number three. I do believe that the 
reasoning behind the name Atkinson or any name that ends in S-O-N is because in previous centuries, he was son of Atkin. So it's very prevalent in Icelandic culture and Norse mythology. Correct. As in Thor is Thor Odin's son. Son of Odin. 60. Not just starts you get here, look. Get a bit of an education as well. A bit of a history lesson. Well, if you ever go to Iceland and you have a name that ends in S S O N, it would be son of something. And in Iceland especially, you get Dottir at Four the end, which five. means daughter of. Oh, I didn't know that bit. There's a lot of uh, athletes in... 91. Oh, what's that? Uh, what's that? Fitness games that they go to? Oh, I, thought, I thought you were on about volleyball or something like that. See, I, I, I watch a fair bit of that at the Olympics. Yeah, they do a lot of strongman stuff in in Iceland, probably yes, better than do. any country on earth. One hundred and forty. Danny, you recall it. One hundred and seventy. From, from there, isn't he? Bjornson. Yeah. yeah. Son of Bjorn. Ninety-four. Adam, you're Edging closer to a 4 2 win unless Atkinson can find two treble 20s. Oh, so Danny will be back. 76. The 4 2. And for the misery to continue for Adam. 45. Danny requires 76. Tough old day so far. Double top. 56. That one was drastically pulled Adam, you require low, 111. which gives a bit of a life raft to Adam. Sometimes with that open hand throw, that can happen. We have had a fair few ton pluses today. We're not going to get one here. I just remembered it was CrossFit. That's what they're good at. 79. With a lot of different Danny disciplines in 20. there for endurance and strength. Danny Van Tripe. Game has got all of the, the ingredients match. to get Danny his second win of the day. And he goes to four points. Only two points behind Raymond Smith and Ben Robb. They are the stats from that one. I'll tell you what signifies how good today has been. That was actually one of the worst matches we have seen. And we had five ton 40 plus shots in there. We had three 180s from Danny. He's trending in the right direction. But we know two players who are trending all day long. Ben Robb and Raymond Smith, they're going to do battle against each other after this.
This is the Moda Super Series. One hundred and eighty. Well, the big night at the Moda Super Series is, of course, the finals night on Saturday. And tickets are available for free via dartshop.tv, based in Portsmouth. And this week, it would be a great thing to do after a certain football match, wouldn't it? Of course, viewers around the world can continue watching the coverage live on the Moda Super Series YouTube channel. Right, back to what's happened so far today. And that previous match saw Danny Van Tripe pick up his second victory of Monday's action. A 4-2 win for the Dutchman against the ADC qualifier Adam Atkinson, an average of just over 87, hit a third of his double attempts, including a 117 checkout. And that means that he's just on the shoulder of the top two in the Group A table. That pair, Raymond Smith and Ben Robb, about to clash in the next match. So he will be two points off second place, but will remain a distance off top. It is a huge match then, biggest match we've had so far. Both players have looked very, very dominant, almost unbeatable so far, but that will change here when Smith and Rob go head to head with each other. Uh, the pair of them, perfect so far. Ben Rob getting the better of Kieran Tierney in his last match to complete a hat trick of wins. While Raymond Smith responded by whitewashing your own Miok took out the 108 finish in the second leg of that match. Followed it with a very, very nice 104 as well. Some fantastic stuff from the man who made the last 16 at the World Championship last year. So he is top of the table on leg difference, but the winner of this match will be the outright leader after four matches here on Monday. It is huge. It is New Zealand against Australia, Ben Robb against Raymond Smith. And it's about to start, so I'll hand you back over to our commentary team, Paul Nicholson and Chris Mason. And what more could you possibly want for a Monday lunchtime than this? Two players who have been fabulous today, in their prime, playing their best stuff, and they're now going up against each other to see who will remain undefeated going into their final match of Monday. We looked at them on the fixture sheet and we thought, there is a possibility here of excellence. We've seen it, but who wins this one? The first of at least three battles of the week. Well, Ben does have the darts in this one. Raymond will have the darts tomorrow, of course, when the roles are reversed. But there you go, like 8 to 11, to Ben Rob. Game on. money, Raymond Smith. I think they may have that a little wrong. Well, we've seen performances that would suggest that 85 he would have no problem in winning the match but the consistency for me is just there with this man well if we look at the performance levels of raymond to start with 100 he got over the line 4-1 against atkinson averaging 83 and a half then after that it was 88 in beating Kieran Tian by four legs to two. Then it was that 4-0 victory, averaging 98. So it's constant improvement. But you do sense that Ben Robb is going to give him his stiffest challenge yet. Oh, I think they're both going to give each other their toughest games of the session so far. Ben Robb started with 85. And then... 123. 100.35. And then a 93.73, so he's sort of bouncing around a little. But bouncing around in decent areas. Oh, absolutely. 80, 60. Listen, 85 is not bad. With, did he, miss at, he missed seven darts at a double and still had an 85. 41. But I'm, I'm with you on that. I prefer to see that constant line of improvement. 
And that's so. something that you might need in a, in a set play format where you might have a bad first set. 100. Or in this format, then a bad first game. 72. But if you can incrementally improve, your confidence is going to swell as well. Yeah, you, you grow into the task, don't you? Rather than all of a sudden averaging 85, like I said, which is still good. The first load. But then ben Rob. you then produce an average of 100.38. You think, well, where where am I? Where How can I replicate Second it? Second leg, it's Raymond to throw first. That's a super start, though. 15 dart hold, including a max in the leg. You think there's a very, very large boat out there somewhere, probably in the Tasman, called the Ben <laughs> Rob? 140. Maybe that's where it comes from. I don't know. It's probably because he's... He's a big lad. Maybe Damon Hetta knows, who has been in touch with us again. Apparently, 100. he's in Northern Ireland right now. He's a busy boy. getting himself around a bit. But it would be really funny if there is a boat out there called the Ben Rob. Gotta be. 97. It's funny because when the Australians and the Kiwis travel to the World Championships, a lot of them gravitate towards each other. They want a, a taste of home, but they do play against each other every year in a Trans Tasman Test match, and the feelings right then are slightly different. <laughs> yeah, I bet. Yeah, I tried to find some some history between the two in in official competition, but I can't find anything. But I'm, I find it hard to believe that their paths may may not have crossed. But of 58. course, their, their pandemic went on a, a little bit longer than. A lot of other people's. Yeah, for a while it was as if there was a dome over New Zealand. Very much like the Simpsons movie. 100. I'm just glad that we're going into the World Championship this year with, without the restrictions that we had 12 months ago. Well, the, the worry of the restrictions, wasn't it? One. We had people out of the tournament because of said Roman restrictions. 120. Let's pray that doesn't ha happen ever again. This is a beautiful possible Shanghai out 80 and Ben Rob could ben double his lead 66. against the guru 15 data with the 72 42 leaves yeah, 24 this leg. is clinical ben Rob. from Ben Rob that's a 14 dart break a throw one dart missed at tops on the 120 third leg it's Ben to throw first game on stoic look from Raymond Smith yeah, that was the epitome of just sitting there like a Buddha statue. I'm giving you no information about 98. my mindset. No, I'm I'm not making you feel that I'm negative or I'm admiring anything you're doing. I think there's inside you'd be going, Wow. I I think there's a lot that a lot of players could learn from 100. Raymond Smith. This whole thing that I have told to some of my clients in coaching and I've just generally spoken about with some other players who needed some advice. Is that if you're going to show any reaction, do it when they can't see you. Now, Raymond's approach is actually taking it to the next level. Don't show anything at any time. No. Don't give them in any insight into how you're feeling that they can use against you. Well, we've seen many a player on this stage and in, in different scenarios where people will bow their heads and 99. show frustration. I, I suppose Aaron Monk is the king of that. What he needs to understand, for example, is the doing that every time is just telling your opponent that you're weak. 137. Well, and the, the, other, the other side of the coin, when you're absolutely hitting somebody with everything and you're, you're, you know, you're trying to get a reaction out of them and they give you nothing. 171. Wow. Raymond, you require 84. Yeah, you, you, you've just got no, no advantage. Well, this has got to be a resuscitation here from Raymond. He's not going to find it, but the reason that that has happened for me was that pure 171 from Rob. 100%. 68. Ben, you require moment you think 36. you've got a tiny bit of comfort, and Ben comes up. Oh, but he's no got score. too much on the end of that Raymond one. Raymond requires 16. Raymond has dodged a bullet. That was a great bullseye to leave the double eight. Game shot on the third line. Takes advantage. Raymond Smith. That's a 14 dart break of throw. This match has started off superbly. 15 and a 14. 
Paul Thagis, ben Raymond's Robin, including first. two 180s. Game on. 180 in the last leg for Raymond, but the 171 was what caused that little moment. And he missed the big number. One of the things I've really admired about Ben's approach to today is just how relaxed 91. he is. 91. If I could just be a Kiwi for the day. He was almost trying not to smile at the end of that third leg. It just looks like someone who's having the time of his life. Well, again, that's where a reaction can help you because in that scenario, then I'd turn around and make sure you were hurt in any way. I'm going to hurt you even more. 100. Try and really make you annoyed. Well, this is week seven, of course, and on Sunday morning it was... Another win for Graham Usher, the first two-time winner in Super Series action. And he will join the likes of Jim McEwen from Scotland, Alexander Merckx from the Netherlands, Justin Smith of Wales. You're starting to see where I'm getting at here. Lots of continental participation in Champions Week already. But then we go to home shores. For the last three weeks, in fact, England, England, Raymond England, Dubai, with Osborne, Kelling, and Graham Usher. Big congratulations to Jamie Kelling, by the way. Yes. Well done to him. So far, it's been 50% on the ben doubles for Rob, but his scoring has been even more impressive than that. Onto the ball. 3 1. 59. Yeah, his average Ranger prior to that effort 76. was over 106. This has got to be clinical. Oh, he's got double A. It's only a matter of time. Commentator's curse. And plan B does not come to fruition. Giving 25. Ben Raymond's shot. He's had opportunity. <laughs> the 25. He's had opportunities here, Raymond. No score. Raymond, you require eight. Is that the lack of experience, do you think? Well, it's the same miss as the previous... On the other side of the board. Miss on double nine. Yeah, absolutely right. Game shot on the fourth leg. And that one's picked Raymond off. Smith. And are we seeing a slightly different quality from Raymond Smith here? This is dogged. Yeah. Fifth leg, it's Ben to throw first. He's just digging in and, and taking his chances. I'm sure if the Super Series ever wanted to expand, I think if they were to have one of these over in Australia and New Zealand, it would be of this kind of standard. Yeah. Yeah, this has been stunning. 140. There's the proof. What more do you need? Three 180s, two excellent averages. 137. Strangely. Exactly the same on the doubles. There's not much between them at all. Parity. Ninety-seven. Had Twenty-one scores of a ton or more, and we're only in the middle of leg five. I hasten to see if these guys are going to be sparring partners 60. going into the World Championship. They're going to do each other a lot of good. Oh yes. There's there's nothing better in your your preparation when you're practicing someone that's on a, a very similar level and you're, you're playing for pride and pushing each other all the way. My 56. debut in the World Championship ben back in 2000 9's Championship. It was actually in 2008 when I made my debut, but... Oh, he's looking at the ball again. He's not going to do it. One hundred and thirty. We all wanted him to go for it, but it was the right play. But just to go back to my point, I was sparring with Russell Stewart. That was a pretty good sparring partner. Absolutely. What Rusty don't know about the game is not worth knowing. 32. Game shot on the fifth leg. Oh, that's beautifully ben done. Rob. 13 data from Ben Robb. This is just littered with quality, this one. Sixth leg. It's Raymond to throw first. Game on. I'm going to pause you a little teaser. The year is 2007. In the 2008 World Championship, who represented Australia from the DPA Order of Merit that year? Now, the person who, or actually, it was from the Australian Open. 
The person who was scheduled to represent Australia, Glenn Power, couldn't make it. Who took his place? Do you remember? 97. Now, I remember that tournament because you were in it. And that was the first Ali Pally. 140. Won by the great John Parr, of course. I'll give you until... His name wasn't Pat, was it? You're thinking of Pat O'Reel. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't Pat. <laughs> I had some fun with Pat O'Reel. Man with the shiniest Nine shoes in the history of the yeah. world. He was actually in the Grand Slam, wasn't he? Pat? Correct. He made the last 16 as well. Yeah, he did. That great moustache. 140. Proper handlebar job. Ranger yeah. Apollo Hughes 170. Yes. Could have been some dark player, wouldn't he? Merv Hughes. Wouldn't want to be the dartboard, that's for sure. He could probably bounce them off the hockey and get them to go into the treble 20. Ben, you're requiring 98. Well, this would be some Yorker. Could it be a corker on double 12? 74. Missed match dart from Ranger Ben. Ranger require 112. We said that Raymond's been dogged in trying to stay in it. This must be hit. Ben 96. thought he was going to hit it and so did Raymond, but unfortunately Ranger it misses by the width of a wire. wire. He's got a massive amount of sizal to work into, Low and score. he can't find it. Roman wow. Is 16. I'm amazed he missed that one. I think 3-3 three, three would be just about right, maybe. Can he find it? No score. No, sir. Same ben, story on a different double. And Ben Robb is back for 12s. He's having trouble on it. He's having to reset. No score. That's six darts Roman, you require in two 16. visits. Missed for the match on that double 12. And Game we go the distance the by hook or by crook. Smith. Raymond Smith is still in this one. If ben Robert, that double 12 with one of the many darts he had at it, he would have seven ended with final a, leg. another 100 plus first. average. Yeah, Game seven off. darts in total for the match at double 12 in that leg, and every single one of them missed high. Well, that just dents his mental confidence just a little bit. And can the guru expose it? Are you still stuck on that teaser I gave you? Yeah. Well, I... Not that it's a clue, but what I will say about said dart player, he is one of the best teammates I've ever had. If I was to construct my ideal 100. squad of, say, 10 players, he would be in there for his spirit alone. Was he a young lad? No. You were thinking of Mitchell Clegg, weren't you? I was. 180! Oh, Raymond knows... Mitch pretty well. If you're watching Mitch, all the best to you. Haven't seen you in years. Oh, it's worth some backed up maximum from Ben Robb. Wowzers, what a game this has been. Sometimes some matches don't quite live up to our expectation or anticipation, but this one sure has. 100. That's an incredible last start. How has he floated that over the top of those two blockers? And he's going to get a look for the match. He's had real trouble in finding the bullseye to, to end a leg. Could this be the one? 18. Button. Oh, he's getting so close. Ben, you require Is he going to have his pocket picked? Ironically, it could be on double 12. Oh, and he got greedy. Yeah, chase the treble. He's not going to get match dot number 37. eight. He's actually missed Raymond a shot there as well. 25. And Raymond Smith. Oh, he's on 25 to win the match again. For the fourth match today to be won on this checkout. Nine. Maybe the spell has been broken. Now look on the bright side, Ben. ben you can't you leave double 12 from 47. here. Oh. 
Yeah. <laughs> well, I thought 3-3 three, three was about right, but I still think Ben Rob's the player who deserves to win this one. He's played the better of the two for me. 15. But now the Roman pressure of actually 16. winning the match taking its toll. Double eight. This will be some steal. And he Game wins a match that he match. probably shouldn't have won. But the good thing is, that game was so enthralling that we will see that fixture another couple of times over the next couple of days. So Ben Rob will have the opportunity of revenge on Tuesday when they play a little bit earlier as well when the fixtures are flipped around. But you can see that plenty of doubles were missed by the pair. I don't think we'll see that many darts missed at double tomorrow, but what an enthralling contest it was. Adam Atkinson and Kieran Tian will face each other next. At the other side of the table, neither have got two points yet, but one of them is about to get them. Welcome back. Well, it had all been building up to that top of the table tussle between the two guys from down under. Chris Mason is here with me to reflect on it, and um, it was dramatic, to say the least. It didn't disappoint, did it? It was uh, the two best players locking horns in a, in a fabulous match, and the, the best thing is we get to see it a few more times this week. It, it just boiled down to, I think, just Ben wanting it too much. He, he, wanted, to, he wanted to get over the line too much, and... That meant he missed a few doubles in the end there. But he was, he was the better player of the two, and that's what he's got to take into tomorrow's match and, of course, finish off today strong as well. Yeah, nine missed match darts for Ben Robb in that one. But Raymond Smith kept calm, carried on, and moved up to the top of the table outright now in front. You can see there on eight points, a perfect start for him. It's looking very, very good, isn't it, for Raymond Smith? Yes, it's looking good for Ben Robb as well. You know, he's, he, uh, Danny does have a game in hand, of course, uh, which will be coming up uh, shortly after our next match. Uh, but, yeah, 
Tian and Atkinson just getting separated from the rest of the group. And we spoke about that at the top of the show this morning. That's what you want to avoid because you do feel like you're just completely disjointed from the rest of the field. Yeah, we go from that top of the table to sort of a, a battle at the bottom now between those two players Chris mentioned. Uh, Adam Atkinson and Kieran Tian. Uh, Kieran's probably had a few more highlights than, than Adam today. Uh, we can see this 111 check out. Yeah, he's also had a, he had a 160 as well, didn't he, Adam? But last time out, Kieran did raise his game a little bit, but then just couldn't, just couldn't find a way to win. He's not getting the opportunities to really get into a match. And, and as we said, that's down to the fact that he's not performed anywhere near his best consistently for a long period of time. He needs to not string the, the legs, you know, ones and twos together. He's got to... He's got to find a run of form that lasts three, four, five, six legs. Yeah, it's 116 check out from Tian. Sorry, it wasn't 111 from Atkinson. He was beaten in that match and cut a frustrated figure at the end of it. It's just maybe a man who's used to winning and suddenly losing games. Yeah, I think he's won 11 ADC titles uh, this year of, of, of different sizes, of course. But it, it's a tough group, isn't it? It's, uh, especially when you've got players like, like Ben Robert and Raymond Smith right at the top, really setting a high standard. The rest of the field are, are playing catch up. We'll let you get down and talk us through it with Paul Nicholson. It is the bottom of the table battle between Kieran Tian and Adam Atkinson. Can Atkinson cut Hightower down or will Tian leave Pooley feeling sick? If you are a fan of the Chris Murphy puns, they will stay for quite some time. I myself have been getting used to them for about 10 years. But the Pooley. I'm sure he's feeling a little bit under the weather as far as points are concerned, but he can still walk away from today with four points if he beats Kieran Tian and if he can get the better of Ben Robb, who will feel just a little bit wounded after losing that previous match. But Kieran Tian and Adam Atkinson have a rather drastic difference in height in this game, just proving that Darts is for everybody. You don't have to be a certain build, certain height. It's for everyone. First leg, it's Adam to throw first. Game on. But somebody's going to walk away with two points from this one, and it will make them feel so much better. You don't want to be that player, Mace, who walks away with zero points no. on a Monday because we talked about it earlier, didn't we? That possibility of getting through the group. Is very, very slim if you are on zero points after Monday, but Adam doesn't wait too long for his first max. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's mathematically possible, but very, very unlikely, and it's it's just the psychological effect it it has on you as a, as a player. You just feel like you're just completely disconnected from the group and your head can drop and all sorts of stuff starts going 100. on. 100. Well, right. more often than not, it's more than 20 points that wins Group A. So if you were to lose all of your games on Monday and be perfect on Tuesday and Wednesday, that's 20 points. It's not going to be enough most of the time. You need the group to bunch up. And unfortunately for these two, that's not happening. We've got two players running away with it at the minute uh, in Ben Robb and Raymond Smith. Even though Danny on Antri four points is only... Two points behind second place now. Remember, the winner straight through to Saturday night's final. Positions two and three into the five-player group B, which is Thursday and Friday night, four, five, and six, back for the red-eye Thursday and Friday morning. This is much better from Atkinson. Do you like the straight-added approach here or the split? The split. You don't want to be chasing averages right now. Game shot on the first leg. Yeah, he's treating it Adam as a three daughter, and it doesn't get much better than that. That's a great start from Adam, and that will give him a lot of confidence. Second leg, it's Kieran so to throw was first. It Game on. Tony Fleet or Warren French? <laughs> uh, it wasn't Tony Fleet. It wasn't Warren French. It was a good pal of mine. We used to have a, a saying, was or an I. 100. Well, actually, we called him Frog, because of the whole French thing. And we used to say, it's my turn because we used to beat each other. He'd beat me, then I'd beat him, and all that kind of stuff. But no, 2008 World Championship, 
It was Steve MacArthur. 137. Nicknamed yep. the General. Yep. After General MacArthur, of course, but I've never met anybody who, 85. as a one-man cheer squad for a team, is as good as Steve MacArthur. Absolutely unbelievable. Every team needs one of those. Talisman. And you know what? He, in certain team atmospheres, no matter what 83. sport it is, not every person is going to get along. No. Now, not everybody, I'm sure, got along with Steve. He was, he was a bit of a rambunctious fella. 140. But whenever there was a, an Australia match on that he was part of, he put that to the side and he'd be behind you 100% anywhere. That I like. That is a proper team player. 41. Can you imagine a team atmosphere here at the Super Series, or are you content with the singles? I, d I think there. I, I think we could do a, a doubles thing. I think a doubles thing would work. work brilliant. Even, a, even a mixed doubles. I think something when we've got when we got that odd week where we're out of sync. To do something like that would be quite interesting. We who, could do who would our you own want world pairs? Who would you want as your doubles partner if you were doing a Super Series pairs? And you could 60. choose your partner. Kieran, right you now. require what? 80. Any nationality? Oh, yeah. Can't have a tour card, though. That was a good miss, wasn't it? Double top. 60. Almost worked out. That noise you can hear is Chris Mason's brain twirling around thinking of a good pairs partner. Ian's going to have a little bit of pressure on this double ten all of a sudden. 82. Kieran, you require 20. Strangely, he's left himself exactly the same number as leg one. Game but shot he's not going to get a look at it. Leg. Kieran, it's 1-1. One, one. You're perplexed, aren't you? I am. I'm just... Third leg, it's Adam to throw first. To, Game is, on. As you know, you've had great success with the... The, the World Cup representing Australia with Simon. It's all about that person that you you would gel with and eighty seven. I don't know, for something a little bit different, Phil Taylor. <laughs> I didn't be expect you to see how, that one. Be interesting to see how that dynamic would work out. I think in pairs you just want someone who you trust, you rely on, you know their game. Yeah. Someone who, when you're feeling a bit down, they can pull you up. And you know you can do it for them as well. You, you, you do have to almost play as one, and it's quite tough. 44. I remember years ago, I was very fortunate to play for Australia in a, a Tri Nation series with. Uh, Brian Roach and Russell Stewart and some other players as well, like Pete Corcoran. But we had a teammate 100. who I would gladly fall back into his arms. I trusted him that much. A guy called Pee Wee Bottrell from Broken Hill. Played pairs with him and we were undefeated in all of the pairs we ever played because he was just that reliable. Yeah, I made the final of the British Open pairs in the 90s with two different people, Dave Janet. Dave Dorset. Jenner, yeah. he's, a, he's a cool hero in yeah. Dorset. Yeah, he was a proper player. And George Turnbull, a great player from the West Country. And 60. I think he played the Gold Cup with Mike Gregory a, a few times. And, yeah, we lost in the final on both occasions, annoyingly. I did win Denmark Open Nine pairs with eight. Mike Gregory. Adam, you require 120. And of course, me and Steve Raw made the final of the PDC World Pairs. Ah, Steve Raw. Yeah, from... from Adam's neck of the woods. Yeah. Maybe not the exact town, but I think it's the same county. Bishop Auckland. 61. Steve Raw was from. It sounds very posh, doesn't it? It was very countryfied. I think that's not far from where Kirsty Hutchinson's Ballsy from. 44. Adam, you're a good lady 59. player who made the final of Lakeside this year against Bill yep. Greaves. Oh, it's a missed single. But this one, 
is turning around. Game shot Yet again. Could be Adam a good Atkinson. tussle, this one. Atkinson took the lead in 12. T and equalised, and then Atkinson takes the lead once again. Full thing. Not. It's Kieran to throw first. Game there. on. O's got to go, and it's not an unbeaten out. One hundred. It's one of those famous phrases from the boxing world, isn't it? Absolutely. What's next for Tyson Fury in your regard? Um, I think he's. I think he, the whole bluff thing about Joyce being a, a harder fight. I think. Ninety-seven. Nonsense. And I think that's just a bit of kidology. But it will either be one of Joyce or Usyk. They might let that marinate a little bit more because that's a. One hundred and thirty. Well, sadly, it's not going to be in the UK. It's gonna, it's gonna end up in Saudi. But uh, weather-wise, it, if it was going to be in the UK, I would have thought let that marinade fight Joyce. I think that's a relatively easy night's work for him. And then uh, the big fight 41. in the summer with Usyk. But the fact that it's going to end up in the Middle East, and it'll probably be first couple of weeks of March, and against Usyk. Well, Kieran Tien's probably not that far under the height of Tyson Fury. I think he's lacking a little bit in the uh, in the poundage department. <laughs> he's got the same sort of build as a straw, but he's got the nickname Hightower, which I love. The old Police Academy, wasn't yeah, it? He's, he's probably not even old to remember Police Academy. No. But, yeah, you should watch him. Yeah, I think Fury's about of that. six, seven, maybe... Close to six eight, but he's not Easy six nine. Five. That's, that's another myth. Next time you get a, an opportunity on our coverage here, just have a look at where Kieran is standing when he gets his darts from the board. He towers, no pun intended, above the double top. Ninety seven. Kieran, you require one hundred and one. This is to equalise once again, and things are looking good. 44, so have some options. Chooses 32. 69. Adam, you require 170. He would love to have a look at the bull here. He's not going to get one. 56. Kieran, you require 32. So dominantly, the miss that Atkinson has is low. I'm not so sure that's anything to do with a tight arm. I think it might be the dart staying in his fingers a bit long because it's a bit sharp. Yeah, and he's no score. maybe over gripping the dart to try and compensate. Adam, you require 114. It's a 3 1. An unexpected opportunity. 94. He's got to get around that flight somehow. 74. He did that, but. Just over pitched Kieran it. It was a fine effort. 32. Certainly wasn't a million miles away. And this man would have been fearing the worst. Oh. Got to be top bin. No score. He's had real trouble on that 32 Adam bed in this leg. 40. And Adam can take full advantage of that. It's a break in seven visits. Thirty-five. Oh, there is that dart that just dives Kieran, at the you end. Require thirty-two. Not enough air penetration, maybe. Oh, not getting into the end of the throw. Not getting the elevation. I think that might work in Kieran's favour. Oh, it didn't. Is that symptomatic no of the score. day he's had? Yeah, well, that, that comes down five. to the lack of confidence from neither player having a a win today. Maybe we should have seen this coming. Game well, that's a beautiful conversion play. on five. Adam Atkinson. That is a very, very difficult checkout, funnily enough. Yeah, the worst double on the board, and he, he he's the most clinical and Fifth leg, makes it's it Adam look to throw first. relatively Game easy. Well, there is a little bit of Hartley pool in the back of that shirt for Adam because he's got a what looks like a, a ship's steering wheel underneath his nickname. Or to the fact 80. that Hartley Pool is on the coast. I haven't actually been to Hartley Pool in quite a long time. I used to play a dart tournament up there. I can't, for the life of me, remember which one. But 
9C7. I used to have a wonderful time, I know that. And if Adam keeps trending the way he's been going this year, maybe. He can't even walk the streets of Hartlepool without signing his autograph. But I wonder what his next step is. Now, if we consider that he's been on people's radar for just less than a year with the 86 system, who, funnily, to, funnily enough, today have actually announced some big news about the increase in prize money for the women, which has doubled. Yep. What is the best next step for him? Is it... Is getting a card a little bit too soon, or is it really challenging on the challenge to her and then doing some bits here? Yeah, I think I think that's the most natural progression rather than sort of be thrown 59. in at the deep end. I think you've got to dominate each one in stages to to ultimately make that step. So that step isn't a huge one from Q school straight into you know walking into your Gezi Price, Michael Smith, 43. Luke Humphries, Ross Smith, you know. The list is endless, and you can effectively be walking into that every time you you play on the pro tour, and not really, not, not learn anything. You're just not, not, not going to learn, and Adam, you're not going to earn. That's the main thing. Well, Adam's looking to earn his first two points, and it might happen right here on double twelve. That's Eight more like it. A beautiful checkout from double A who spinebusters his way to two points to get himself off the foot of the table. That was a really good, steady performance with a climactic end for that 1-3-8. He knows how to finish a job, doesn't he? When he gets to that point, Kieran Tien, unfortunately, his confidence is dented and he only has one more chance to get some points against Jeroen Mjok in match 15. Speaking of Jeroen, he's up against Danny Van Tripe in an all-Dutch battle after this. So then, Adam Atkinson off the mark before the break, toppling Tian to leave Hightower, feeling low, stranded at the foot of the Group A table. We'll look at that in a moment, but first a reflection on that match. 4-1 to Adam Atkinson. Tian not turning up really at all in that game, missing 11 darts at double, averaging 
just shy of 75, 12 points lower than the ADC qualifier who took out that wonderful 1-3-8 checkout and hit half of his double attempts. And that means he's off the bottom, level on points now with Jeroen Miok, who's going to play in the next match. Danny Van Tripp on four, Ben Robin second on six after losing to Raymond Smith, who has won all four of his matches so far. Right, now it's time for a Dutch darting duel as Danny Van Tripp takes on Jeroen Miok. The pair of them have been in action today. Van Tripp, slightly better performances so far, taking out this 117 in his victory against Atkinson. As for Miok, well, has shown some decent stuff, has averaged around the 100 mark in a couple of his matches, including this one, actually, but he didn't win a leg in it. Missed three darts before Raymond Smith completed the whitewash win. And he's beaten everybody so far. But it should be a decent game based on what we've seen so far. And I know that Paul and Chris and probably you at home like a little bit of a trip down memory lane at times. We'll hear some Netherlands nostalgia ahead of this Dutch battle. It is 12 years to the day since the Dutch team of Raymond van Barneveld and Co. Stompy won the first World Cup for Holland. Well, let's see if this Dutch duo can maybe channel a little bit of that dynamism. Paul and Chris will talk you through it. Yeah, that is a good start, that one, Murph. I remember it well. Thanks to the Welsh who took myself and Whitlock out in the semi-finals with that glorious 116 checkout from Barry Bates. But yeah, that was the first World Cup and it was played in Tyneside with lots of snow outside. It was very, very cold that weekend, Mace. Yeah, I think we, we played in Salford in the... Uh, the World Cup, uh, the World Pairs that then obviously became the World Cup. And then somewhere else up north in a, in a uh, holiday camp. It was, first uh, leg, it's your own to throw yeah, first. Yeah, quite bizarre. The Salford Game one on. was amazing. A young 17, 18 year old Ronnie O'Sullivan was in the audience that night. I don't even think we could get the cast of Geordie Shaw at ours. 140. That seems like a long time ago, that. 12 years ago. But a double Dutch battle it is of 60. two of the next generation of Dutch players, of which there are plenty. Now, what has been a really interesting 45. couple of weeks where we've seen quite a lot of people lose their tour cards, and it was bad news for the likes of John Henderson, unfortunately. 81. Will not grace the world. Uh, Jeffrey Desvan, some big names will be going to Q School, but some people did save their cards for now. 85. You look at someone like Keegan Brown, for instance, he's now gone to 65th in the world, is in the World Championship, but will have to win a game 100. to keep his card. Jeff Smith, by qualifying, has actually got to 63. Yeah, the one that surprised me was in the recent Players' Championship finals as Ryan Joyce was outside of a world championship 97. position but came through the qualifiers himself and he played some decent stuff at Minehead and I'm sure that had an effect on the way he played 100. last Monday Absolutely. Jerome you require 134 you Carol Sednicek a little earlier he, is it Evil Charlie or Pure Evil or something if he, he's up against Raymond Smith in the world 43. Yeah, and if he Danny wins that match and maybe a couple more he could get a card yeah. avoid that European Q score and that's something that 45. Danny Van Tripe has already done. Jerome, you're requiring 91. Ventures on the Challenge Tour this year. Well, that leaves 85. And he hasn't got the 45, so no shot at 25. tops. Just a Danny little bit messy. 115. Well, the theme of today so far has been these some plus outs. At least 58. Tops. 75. Jerome, you require 66. <clears throat> Game oh, shot on the first Beautifully leg. done from your own Mirf. Very clinical, wasn't it? For a hold of throw, and it looked like Danny was going to get the break. Second leg, it's Danny to throw first. Game on. Well, these two know each other very, very well. Yeah, it's quite a close-knit community, 30. the Dutch darting community, isn't it? It's not the largest country in Europe, 
you can be from one side of the country to the other in about 75 minutes. Or 97. Based on some of the way I've seen some of the other players driving, about half an hour. 58. You spent a lot of time there. Yeah, yeah, I did uh, back in the day. was over there pretty much for a, a week every month on the road doing shows. 58. Great time, great time to be involved in darts. Of course, it's on the back of the Barney Mania. 140. You think Raymond van Bonneveld knows the knock-on effect of what he's done? 140. Yeah. yeah, I think he's I think he's fully aware, which is why really prior to retirement and, and everything 95. else. I think he became a little bit bitter and a little bit disillusioned by it all. Do you get the feeling that on top of what Raymond's done, that some other players didn't get 60. as much credit that they maybe deserve, like Roland Shelton? Yeah, and Co and Michael. I mean, Michael gets the recognition for terms of 82. achievements, but you require certainly not the, the impact he's made, which is where I think this next generation is coming from, the impact Michael made, not necessarily the impact 47. Raymond made. That, Danny that era is now come and gone. Doesn't have to stay on the 60. He could have gone for double, 56. double, or even treble 16 there, but 99. he runs on... 99 red balloons, and he's looking at the red. It's the right way to go. 39. Danny, you require 40. A level game. Ooh. No too score. Many. Not the first time that's happened today. 60. First time for Danny, though. There's a lot of tungsten in the way of that double top bet all of a sudden. 40. Danny, you require 40. Well, so far, this one has been about missed opportunities. Game shot on the second one. Plenty of giant double Danny 10, Van though, wasn't he? Not hitting it every time, but always hitting it eventually. Yeah, he's had uh, plenty of legs finished down there. Third leg, it's your own to throw first. Yeah, Game I want to hear one of my favorite Dutch darting stats. It's not so much a stat, it's a fact. And a lot of 119 darts fans out there don't know the answer to this, and they really should. Who was the first Dutch player to participate in a PDC World Championship? In a PDC one. 100. I'm amazed you don't know that one off by heart. You've got until the end of the leg. 100. I'm sure there are going to be plenty of people tweeting me right now, but you don't have time. Roland. See, that was my first guess when somebody asked me this, and I was wrong. I thought he made the switch before Ray. There was somebody who made their debut before 70. Roland when he was still doing Lakesides. Now these guys have got ambitions of gracing big stages like that, and Danny's 40. not got long to wait, and... Like I mentioned earlier, he's got Steve beaten in round one. And could you ask for more? 100. In your debut Drawing match? I don't think he could. One thing that the tempo's going to suit both. I don't think Steve's going to know too much about Danny. 104. Well, he won't no. care. <laughs> Danny requiring 91. He doesn't spend mental bandwidth worrying about other players. He just gets on with the job. 31. Jerome, you require 42. Steve, in a recent interview, did say he would be giving it one more year to see what happens. Game shot on the third leg. Jerome Meok. That is the benefit of having those darts with yeah. long points because you can get them so close together. It just goes to show Four how play. good it's a guy that was for your own. Game on. Because he used it so perfectly. Do you want to be put out of your measure, yeah, by the on. way? Braulio Ranchero. Yes. 100. Well, he wasn't actually Dutch, but there you go. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want to go down that that, that I had many, many a battle 60. with Braulio back in the day. Fabulous player. Diminutive in, diminutive in size, but 100. Goodness, made with a big heart. Tough to beat. You can't really give anybody a, a better compliment than that. Tough to beat. 58. Hey, what, when, when my days are up, if somebody says that, said that about me, I'll take it. 
42. Well, this one's oh, just I been I a bit scratchy, my, I, isn't it? I trade my whole career for that one Players' Championship title, pal. Let's put it that way. 134. <laughs> and especially to beat Phil Omru. It was the perfect storm. 59. Here's a little bit of information for you. When I, when I won the semi-final... I'll tell you what was going through my mind. It wasn't about Six Taylor. It wasn't about making the final. If you would watch back of me hitting the double five, and I went to retrieve my darts from the board, I said, I'm in the Grand Slam. 94. Yes. That's what was on my mind. I wanted to be back in the Grand Slam because that's where I made my TV debut. I yep. wanted to get back to that. And that detachment from 80. what Danny I was doing and focusing on something else actually helped. Yeah, absolutely, because you could have got caught up in the whole thing. 66. Drone, you require 101. Since trouble for Danny Van Tripe if this goes in. And it's looking decent. Double 16. He's just hit it in the previous leg. 69. Oh, but he needed the extra shot. Danny, you require 40. Wasn't a horribly thrown dart, that's for sure. But it's double 10 again. Ooh, double 5 this time. 30. Jerome, you require 32. Doubling, doubling disaster. One from 10 on the doubles for Danny. They're not good. Game but that shot one is. The fourth leg. Isn't it beautiful Jerome when you get off. three darts at a double? You can have two shockers. As long as one of them goes in. 3 1 Miok. Fifth well, leg. It's Jerome to throw first. Game Miok. on. Won't do his. Stats any harm in terms of leg difference, that's for sure. He'll actually jump Van Tripe in the table. 97. If he wins this leg. Yep. I knew that. 60. I think that's 134. Ben Robb. And his Australian friend Raymond Smith are going to take some stopping in this group. One hundred. If you're going to, if you're going to stay in touch with them, I don't think you can walk away from today with less than six points. Now we are going to go into round five after this 125. game. One hundred and twenty-five. Van Tripe will have a crack at six points, even if he loses this game. But if Miok wants to walk Jordan away with six points today, he has to win this game in his next one. Yeah. Problem is for Danny is he's up against Raymond Smith. Your yeah, has got Kieran Tien, which right now looks like a very winnable game. Yeah, Kieran's not quite found his feet so far today. Jerome, you require it's probably because they're about six and a half feet away. <laughs> That's a great first start for the match. Sixty-five. Not a chance. Danny, you require every likelihood he gets another one. But Kieran will have the knowledge. But he's had 59. disastrous days before and bounced back and won the week. Jerome, you require 20. Yeah, maybe I shouldn't have mentioned that to him this morning. Game but your own is the one the who wins the Battle Jerome of the Dutch by four legs to one. It wasn't a classic by any means. Both of the averages were in the mid-70s and they will do a duel over the course of the next couple of days. But that's a valuable two points for your own Miok. Gets him to four points and above Danny Van Tripe in that table. So he could walk away with six points, as could Danny Van Tripe. He'll have to beat Raymond Smith in round five. Kieran Tien awaits your own milk. But what awaits us is Adam Atkinson and Ben Robb to start us off in our final round of the day.
Hello again. Well, Dutch bragging rights go to Jerome Miok after that 4-1 win against Danny Van Trite before the break there. Uh, neither player really hitting the heights that we've seen from the likes of Raymond Smith and Ben Robb today. Uh, but Miok getting the job done in a scrappy affair. Van Trype made to pay for those nine missed darts at double in the game. Here's what it does to the Group A table. Day one of three in that table, and it means the Dutch duo are tied on four points in the middle. Adam Atkinson, after getting his first victory in fifth spot, Kieran Tian so far winless, but it's Raymond Smith on eight points without being beaten so far, who leads by two points from Ben Robb. They're all going to play their final matches in the next few games now, and the first of them is Adam Atkinson against Ben Robb, and their days of changed really in their last games. Atkinson hadn't won in his first three matches, but managed to get the better of Kieran Tian by taking out this fabulous 1-3-8 finish. And as for Rob, well, he had won all of his first three matches, but missed nine match darts against Raymond Smith, who punished him to go on and maintain his unbeaten record. A lot of them at double 12, all high as well as Chris and Paul were mentioning in comms during that one. But he has played at a very high standard today, and he'll be looking to put those double demons behind him in his next game. So it is Adam Atkinson looking to go back to back, and Ben Robb looking to bounce back. And it's time for us to go back to Chris Mason and Paul Nicholson. Thanks, Murph. Yes, last game of today for these two then. And I'll be fascinated to see what Ben Robb can do in response to what happened in that brilliant battle in game 10 between himself and Raymond Smith. Arguably game of the day, but it just had a lot about it. A lot of excellence and enough misses for drama. And these players will be hoping that we don't have a great deal of drama because the 34-year-old from Auckland would love to just get over the line and walk away with eight points for the day. As for Adam, four points would be tickety boo, as they say in the northeast of England, or at least our pal Graham Stoddart would say that. Absolutely. Sounds as a fish kick. First leg, gets Adam to throw first. Game on. I have no idea where that started, but it's still a thing to this well, he day. He was born on a mountaintop in Tennessee, wasn't he? <laughs> the best dart player you ever did see. Sure, Graham's seen a bit of Adam this year at local tournaments. Yeah. yeah, would have done. And can he, Kevin McGuin? 52. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see the, the response from Ben. It, it was, I, I was just walking through after match 10 when I was up with Murph, and Raymond was quite philosophical, saying that I've just stood behind and I was getting outscored and just waiting for my chances, and you gave me them. and. Yeah, preparation for any tournament like a world championship or, or doing any sort of challenge like this. You're not going to have every session or every day of competition go your way. And that is a really good learning experience for Ben early in the piece this week. That let's say you lose a couple of matches, you then have the ability in this format to bounce back. It's like dropping a set that you should win in the world. And, exactly. And not letting it carry, carry over to to the next set or the set after it. And if any nation on earth is really good at using the philosophy of life at its best in sporting things like this, it's New Zealand. Because they're about as chilled as anybody on earth. Phil Hazel once told me that you've got three minutes once you've lost a match. And after that three minutes is up, you move on. And if you can't, you will infect 59. the rest of your day. Adam, you require Mine used to last three months. <laughs> this has been a great start from Adam. 78 after 12. Can still finish. 16 ball. Ooh. Double nine. That's a bonus. Well, that's Game one of the most the unconventional 78 checkouts you'll ever see. With two trebles and a double. But it works. 
Second leg, it's Ben to throw first. This Game is the on. First time he's really come up against some kind of adversity so far today, isn't it, Ben Rob? Forty-five. It is metal tested here. If there's one quality that he's going to need this week, and at Alexandra Palace, twenty-one. It's patience and resilience. Because who's he playing? One of the slowest players on tour. Now, I'd be 60. amazed right now if Mickey Mansell's not watching this because any information you can get on your opponent is valuable. So if you're watching, Mickey, this is what you're up against. And I think, 83. I think that's a huge advantage rather than going in blind against somebody. You, you get a good look at them, you, you sort of get a feel for their pace and and Mickey's very, one. very measured, very deliberate. Throws every dart with 100% focus and commitment. And he throws them very, very well. That's, you know, sometimes you can come up against a, you know, a, a, a slower paced player that, you know, they, they might not 39. be that good, so it doesn't really matter. But when they're as good as Mickey, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's going to be a tough game for Ben Rob, that's for sure. He's On the flip side him. of that, do you think that he knows anything about Adam? Because I'd be surprised if he does, because they swim in very different circles. True. And on that token, will you want to subscribe to Better the Devil You Know Than the Devil You Don't? Yeah, absolutely. I, I'd like to to know a little bit. If if it was a player I didn't know, I, I wouldn't put my same I wouldn't put myself on the same practice board, but I'd certainly put myself next to it and just you know, just have a have a look for fifteen, twenty minutes and then go off and discuss it with one of my um, pals I would have had with me at the time. Well, Ben's recovered quite well here. What he would love is a two dark conversion, including double 12, to put that demon to rest. Yeah. 43. Just to clinically ben get rid of the leg. 81. And then you truly move on. Well, it's double 13 instead. 55. Adam, you require 117. Actually, quite a difficult conversion, that going from left to right. And at a W, we'll rarely have a look at. It's actually the second rarest hit double. On ben, the you board. require 27. Yeah, super series. Outside of double 17. Yep. This is why people don't like leaving it, because it's an odd number. Well, and it's the fact that it can potentially block 60. your next route, of course, which predominantly will be double four. And you've got no feel for it because you just don't go at it. A lot of the other doubles, you've got a bit of muscle memory there. Adam's had plenty of chances at tops today. 40. He hasn't scared that one. Ben, you you see how he feels eight. about it. That's a nice guide. Game he's found the second that double four ben with Rob. the aid of that first guide to draw level at 1-1. One, one. So far, Rob has almost Third fallen off Adam to throw the edge of the cliff scoring-wise, averaging 71 so far. But one of the things about this format that I, I distinctly think is very much like Q school is that the first day you come in on a Monday, you could easily tire up by game five. But the more you play five games per day, the easier it will get. Yeah, you can become more accustomed to it physically and mentally. No, I, I never, will never forget my day five, and I was literally just burnt. I, I, there was just nothing left physically or mentally. I was 100. just fried. On that token, there was something I wanted to talk to you about this week. On the record... Do we focus enough 51. because of these schedules of Super Series players and, and people in different tours? Do we emphasize on recovery enough? No. No, and I, I and I, you know, listen, I'm, I'm, I keep fit. I'm a, I'm a personal trainer in my part time, not so much now because of obviously work commitment and, you know, I, I eat well, I look after myself, but I literally, as soon as my last art was thrown. As long as, as long as my media commitments was done, I was out the door, rehydrating, 
get some good food, quality food, and rest and rest and rest. And I was still fried by the Friday. So, you know, some of the more younger players are enjoying the moment. And of course, they 100. all might go out and eat, and then that night becomes later. And then by the end of the week, you know, you maybe you'd get away with it when you're in your 20s, maybe in your 30s, but it will eventually catch you out. Adam, you require 80. Look at look at how many times, especially in the, the events where you see where they're playing three matches on the same day on the Euro Tours, that by the time the final comes around, that a lot of them could have, you know, not have nothing left in the tank. Game shot All the of a sudden, leg. those darts Adam that were Atkinson. sailing low for Atkinson earlier are starting to find their beds. And... You get the feeling that if he is Paul playing Pegg, it's to throw first. a on. really big amount of local tournaments up in the northeast of England and beyond, that those long days in that right arm, just rest the mind for an hour, maybe 90 minutes, and then stretch out and then get yourself ready for action. Yeah. You, don't, you don't see top-level sports people just laying flat all day and then going out and performing. You see them on the range. You see them doing things when they're finished. Recovery, I think, is the next best thing that we're going to talk about when it comes to professional dogs. Yeah, well, warming up and warming down is, is the prevention of, of injury and part of recovery. I, 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 back in the day, I'd walk to a cab or to the pub. and 99. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, long walks back to the hotel at three in the morning. I say you, you you feel like you're invincible back then and you can get away with it, but even if you're taking five percent away from yourself, that five percent can be the difference between winning and losing. Now five percent is a massive amount in this sport. One hundred. That's why I admire what you require one hundred and Ben's gonna be doing with his oceanic partners over the next week in a bit because this is ideal preparation and I know for a fact that hanging around Raymond he's going to get everything else right as well. Well that leaves 78 which was his number <laughs> earlier on in the match. Well the beauty is as well they'll, they'll be travelling together so when they get down to London they will be in this worrying about oh who can I find to practice with the players hotel you I think there's a wonderful facility for the players. Game shot on the fourth leg. Well, General. I can't believe what I've just seen, Mace. We've seen a bullseye checkout. I think that's only the second one of the day, but that was a huge one for Ben. Adam's thinking, Fifth oh, leg. look, Adam's to throw I've first. got double 12 Game left. On. But I'm not getting a look at it. That was the best finish of this match. We've seen a, an array of ton plus outs today, but our first big one on the ball. And what's more, Ben Rob not afraid to give it a little bit of some. We don't mind that in this venue. If you take exception to that as a player, well, that's your personal opinion, but I think the way that Ben has approached Monday, he's going to give it absolutely everything he's got from start to finish. Yeah, I did tell you the Alan Norris and Gary Robson story, did I? No. Oh, the week, the week I played... Uh, Alan Norris came in for a, a Group C, and he he played he played Gary Robson. He really got involved up there, and uh, Gary wasn't particularly um, yeah pleased with it. So he come back in and made his place known, and Barry Bates sat in the corner, not saying a word. Just like there was a little bit of tension in there, nothing too dramatic. Sixty, and he just piped up and said, "Yeah, who do you think you are, but Gazi Norris?" And that was it, and that completely sort of everybody was rolling around on the floor laughing, and we called Alan Norris Gazi Norris for the rest for the, for the rest of the uh, tournament. Yeah, it was brilliant. Yeah, you got to watch your step when it comes to practice tables, practice rooms, that kind of thing. Nicknames can stick. Yeah, I had a little bit of hair sticking up on the top of my head once, and Mervyn King for the next two years called me Mister Magica. <laughs> <laughs> 135. Ben, you require 121. Right. Can it be another bull finish? I mean, we be like buses, been waiting all day. No, not this time. 57. Adam, you require 51. Well, Adam was left bereft for that 128. Oh, he's missed a single. He's got a clean top, so waiting. 31. Again, he's had a dart like that previously in the day where the line 64. was perfect. He just under pitches it. Double 16. 
48. Is that far away from a 3 2 Adam, lead? you require 20. I find as well, when you start missing big numbers, you don't just miss the one, do you? It, you, you it's in your mind then. The seed's been planted. That was a safe try. This one's got to be more aggressive. 10. Well, he, he's over pitched, wary ben of the pool. Ben requires 16. Ben Rob, wary of the poolie. Game shot on the fifth well, leg. Picture ben worthy Rob. double eight. I don't think he expected to be 3 2 up, but he is. Yeah, and that was uh, a break of throw. And now. Sixth leg, it's Ben to throw first. Has the opportunity to serve it out, only averaging 82. Fairly happy with an 82. He won't be. <laughs> 51. This is all about testing his will and his, I say, his patience. Sometimes you've got to win ugly. This is one of those darts matches. It's a bit like being Manchester City. And you've been drawn against 60. Luton Town on a Tuesday night in the Carabao Cup. And you just got to go there and win 1 0. Yeah, just try and grind one out. That's the thing about professional sports. Sometimes 86. you have to go to places that you don't necessarily like. I never like playing at Blackpool, but I still wanted to get there. 100. My fave. It was just back in the day, it was one of the first ones that we really did sort of sell out to, to pure fans. And it it was unique. There'd be, you know, you'd finish playing and you'd go down and sit at the, the back and 58. watch the, the rest of the darts. And, you know, you, you almost knew everybody in there. It was It was brilliant. Yeah, it was different for me. Miss. 100. I'd go off the stage and just want to get away from everybody who hated me. Yeah, it's much nicer being in the commentary booth. Safety. Yeah, behind the glass. Well, maybe sometime 92. in the future, one of these guys could grace the Winter Gardens. Absolutely. I don't think we've ever had a Kiwi there, have we? We've had a lot of Australians. But I don't think we've had a key for it. The Winter Adam Gardens. Require 142. Yeah, players from the northeast of England have been there. I know. Stoddart has been there. I'm sure Steve Raw has been there as well. Glenn Durant, of course. Yeah. Had one of his best wins of his career in that stage. 110. Beautiful set. Then you require 90. Well, he should get a dart at the ball. Maybe one at double five. But it is the ball. Wasn't ready. 65. The bull can't Adam save him this time. 32. That was to win the whole thing. This is to save the whole thing. All the way over to fours. 28. That's just happened ben too many times today, and now he's missed 10 darts a double in this match. And the big rig is just about on double eight. Game and he doesn't shot. miss many match and darts match. this time, ben and he walks away on his debut day in the Motor Super Series with a very, very good eight points from 10. In fact, the only person that's beat him today is the man who can get to 10 points. 86 the average for Adam. It's not good enough in beating Ben Robb, who couldn't quite get to the 80 mark. But that 1-8 to eight checkout was the highlight of that match. Speaking of Raymond Smith, he's going to take on Danny Van Tripe in our 14th match of the day. Don't miss that. It's coming up right after this.
Welcome back to the Modus Super Series, where it's been more than decent debut for New Zealand's Ben Robb. He's won four of his five Monday matches. That's after defeating Adam Atkinson before the break. A 4-2 success for Robb in that one. He took out 128. Atkinson missing 10 darts at double in the game and Robb punishing him for that. So he is sitting in a decent position in the table. Level on points at the moment with Raymond Smith. Of course, Smith still has his final game to play and could go one better than Ben and make it a perfect first outing here at the Super Series. He's in action next in the penultimate match of this session. He takes on the Dutchman, Danny Van Tripe. But as I say, Smith is looking to complete the clean sweep. And that's after he got the better of Ben Robb when the pair met in his previous match. It was Robb's missed doubles that were punished by Smith on that occasion. He kept his cool and got over the line to make it four from four. And now he's looking for that dream debut of five straight victories on his opening day in this tournament. Van Tripp, well, he lost out to his... Dutch compatriot Jeroen Miok in his previous match, 4-1. So he's looking to win this game to have a positive return at the end of the day with three wins from five rather than two. Uh, but it is Smith who's the heavy favourite in this one. Let's see if he can indeed complete the clean sweep or whether Danny can end Raymond's run. OK, penultimate match of Group A on Monday then. And... Raymond Smith is looking for the perfect debut day. Yeah, and I like his price in this one. Four to five, Danny. Ten to eleven. And unbeaten so far today. And has come through the adversity of the second best player of the day so far in Ben Robb. And I also like Jerome in our final match against Kieran, who's been right out of sorts. And they're five to six each of two. So nice little double there. Ten to eleven, five to six first double. First leg, it's Danny to throw first. Gamble responsibly. BeGambleAware.org. Only bet what you can afford to lose because usually with my tips, you will. 140. Yeah, so far today, Danny Van Tripp has mustered up four points. Started with a 4-1 win against Kieran Tien in his first game. Then a 4-2 loss to Ben Robb, which doesn't look that bad considering he's walked away with eight points. And Van Tripp did get a win against Adam Atkinson five. in round three in game nine as well. But as far as performance levels are concerned, do you think he'll be somewhat philosophical about it, the fact that it's day one? He hasn't played his best, but he's got time to improve. Yeah, absolutely. 180. Absolutely. And Playing in Group A, you've got that safety net as well, of course. 100. Well, wherever you're watching, whether it be via Sporty Stuff TV or via our Modus Super Series YouTube channel, or, of course, on the Sporty Stuff website itself, or your chosen bookmaker, welcome along. Hope you've enjoyed the action. If you are a social media user, 42. make sure Ready you give us a follow at MSS Darts on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel, even if you're not watching there, for all the extra content, interviews, 45. reviews, Danny previews. And you can get a really good insight into what the players are feeling before they start a campaign. We did interviews with all of the players this morning, and if you want to watch them again, they are there for your entertainment and your Raymond enjoyment. We'll do the same with the Group B and Group C players later in the week. 60 tops. 59. Never panics, does he? Danny requires 76. No, very, very calm. That's slightly unnerving as an opponent. 56. It's just very, very Raymond hard to break. 60. He's a bit like a bit of... Overcooked pork crackling. I don't know how much you like that, miss. Game shot on the oh, first leg. Beautiful. Raymond Smith. Just food in general. <laughs> He's just snapped that leg in two and taken it for himself. Second leg. It's no Raymond seconds for first. Danny. Game on. 80 in the leg. 17 dart break. I 
just love the throw. It's just so simple. The thing that I One like the hundred. most about it, and it, it's hard for me to say this considering how beautiful the follow through is, but it's the lack of body movement. You look at a lot of players, I mean, Danny's a, a great example of this. Something is on the move yep. when the throw is in motion. Look at that body. It's not moving at all. No, and the, and the thing is, when there's the fewer moving parts, it's so much more easy to replicate and right on cue. Raymond piles in a max, and, and that's the that's the secret of this 60. game. Is you were moving parts of all, and there's a lot of body movement, you see. You've got to get that timing right on the release and everything else, so it all works together. Do you know, we were talking a little bit earlier about throws resembling other people's. Well, I've just figured out, after knowing Raymond for years, and seeing him for 45. the first time in about four years Raymond this morning, 84. who his throw reminds me of? It's Makuru Suzuki. Yeah. Great shout. Great shout, that. He's got the same 44. penetration through the air and the ability for him to throw the dart, then move. It's a massive compliment because there are too many players these Ready days to who are 40. too busy trying to retrieve the darts before they're yeah. even thrown. Walking on the last one. Could be why Raymond is 2 0 up. 30. In a minute. One hundred and thirty-four. you require Steve ten. Beaton, I'm sure, is not watching because he's not a watcher. Game shot on the second leg. But Raymond, Raymond Smith is two 0 up, snatching the dart away from the board with glee because he's halfway to where he Third wants to be. Third leg to throw first. Game on. And one thing I can tell you as well, no matter what Raymond does in this group, let's see goes on, goes, goes on and wins Group A. He will still turn up with Ben Robb, no matter what group he goes into. Now, and vice versa. If Ben was to win the group, he would then accompany 100. Raymond. It would be a team effort this week, even though they're in singles. Yeah, for sure. We saw that from Jim McEwen. Yeah. He was so focused on what he was doing in the weeks he played that he said, I, I don't want any time off. I'm here to fully focus on this. So he was here even when he wasn't winning. Yeah, we see that a lot of players will come in after this session finishes and, and use the facilities to, to practice. 66. Funnily enough, Jim McEwen is the only person this year to have completed a perfect six. A 180, 170 out. Yep. Danny we average one a year. Whereas in nine daughters, we average five. That tells you something. 78. 95. And leaves 60. That's okay. And it is the, the super six, isn't it? The 180, 170. Could be a super three. 140. Danny requires 60. He's not going to have anything in the way of tops. 40. And double 10 doesn't Raymond come to his rescue this 80. time. I smell trouble. Smith smells blood. Just got what he doesn't catch that flight. Oh, he picks the side, opens the bed up, Game shot on the third slaps leg. it Raymond in Smith. tops, and he's getting better in increments of one. 17 darts, 16 darts. That was a 15 with an 80 checkout. Fourth leg, it's Raymond to throw first. 50% on his doubles. So a little 14 darter here. And it'd be 4 0. There is a possibility right now of somebody getting 10 points 81. and a leg difference of plus 14 for the day. Now, I know it's silly of me to say this because it probably won't happen. But imagine if he replicated that three times and he had 30 points with a leg difference of plus 42. Now, it is my understanding that the leg difference record is plus 29, which in itself is a little bit ridiculous. Well, especially in the in the company that you're in. One hundred and forty. Back to back one forties for Danny. He's not deterred. 
100. But he is disappointed with just a ton because it doesn't put him on a finish to put the match out of Danny Van Tripe's reach. 41. Oh, I don't think that was the right player. No, it wouldn't. Even a single 18 wouldn't have left a finish. Yeah, should have gone 19s, <coughs> then 18s. If you go 17s, there you got to go back to 20s. Or even stay on the 17s, you could. 132. And ultimately, massively punished. So it doesn't matter what Danny does here. 135. Raymond Jericho but Smith 48. Could wind up with a Lou Reed. Gives that the death stare. Game but he looks straight the to match. the pinnacle Raymond of day Smith. one with 10 points. He's traveled an awfully long way to be here on his way to the top of the hill in North London. But he's here to do business. That's another great display. He's put on plenty of them today. 10 flawless points for Raymond Smith. And Danny Van Tripe will have to settle for four from Monday. We'll come back with our final game of the day between Kieran Tian and Euron Meek. After this, Tian still looking for points. Welcome back. Well, what a debut it's been for this man next to me, Raymond Smith. Five wins from five. Uh, it could not have gone any better, could it? Oh, it, it could have gone better, but I'm not going to complain mm -hmm. any. I'm, I'm happy with the results. So. Uh, completed with this last match, we'll just see the stats from your win against Danny Van Tripe. Uh, very, very respectable average, 95. It's a high level here at the Super Series. Um, what, when did you arrive here, and how, how long did you think it would take you to actually play yourself into some form? Because... There's obviously all the uh, jet lag and things that come with travelling from where you have. Yeah, it's, um, I'm, I'm feeling a little bit tired. I was, I was getting a bit shaky towards the end of the day, but I think it made me focus a little bit more. So um, I started to fatigue uh, against Ben. I fatigued in the, the, the second game, but uh, I had a little bit of something to eat and then back into it. But uh, yeah, no, hopefully by tomorrow or the, or the day after, I'm, I'm, I'm firing on all cylinders. And you've given yourself a little bit of room for manoeuvre, really. We'll take a look at the league table. Uh, you're top of it, obviously, having won all of your games. But there was a real battle going on between yourself and Ben Robb, wasn't there? Yeah, yeah. And, and, and to be fair, I think Ben outplayed me pretty much most of the day. But, um, you know, as, as I've done, you know, as I said, I, I fatigued a little bit in there. I just sat in the park and wait for, waited for a shot. And when I got the shot, I took it. When nice. you got the call to come here as well, was that ideal for you in preparation for your return to Alexandra Palace? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. I, um, and it, it's, it's not just the, the, the preparation perspective as well. I've, um, one of the big things that we've got back home is, is trying to make a living out of darts. If you try and 
come over to the UK and, and all that sort of jazz because it's either you get a tool card or you can't. So uh, Modus has put, it, uh, put a lot of conversations out there amongst Australia about um, that there are other, other avenues. You know, we, can, we can make a living from this coming over without, uh, you know, without the tool card and all that sort of stuff. So it's, uh, yeah, there's, there's a lot of excitement at the moment. Yeah, it's good practice as well, isn't it? Good Absolutely. competitive practice. Y you'd be familiar with the format. Are you kind of looking to win this group to get that couple of days rest before coming back on Saturday? I, I don't know if that's going to work in my favour, but um, yeah, look, at the end of the day, if you're coming back to play in the finals, you know, top, topping the table, I'll take it every day of the week. But um, yeah, I, I hope so, yes, absolutely. It, it'll be a confidence booster to, to, towards the Worlds, but uh, also towards Saturday as well. But um, no, we'll see what comes of it. Well, we'll let you get some rest today. I'm sure if you carry on playing like that, you'll be here talking to me tomorrow again as well. Well done. I hope so. Uh, five out of five then for Raymond Smith on debut. One match still to play. Uh, Kieran Tian still looking for his first win so far in Group A. He takes on Jerome Miak looking for his third. Yeah, very eloquent there was Raymond Smith. And a difficult thing to do to play jet lagged is this game, but he's done a fine job. But Cork's 23 year old would dearly love to walk away with just. 20% of the points that Raymond Smith has found, but your own Miak has shown us at times today that he's got levels. Maybe just searching for a bit of consistency, but he's got four points and he could find his way to third position by the end of the day if he gets a win against Kieran here. Yeah, and just two off of Ben Robin, two wins away from table topping Raymond Smith. But I think it was interesting that different. Philosophy first, uh, gets Kieran with to Raymond throw Smith in. I'm not game on. You know, I'm not sure having those two days off would suit me. You know, he wants to play as much darts and as much competitive darts in a, a perfect environment as possible. And it's you know, so different to what we've heard from from players before who were pretty much, you know, the vast majority. Oh yeah, give me those two days off. Yeah, I think it suits certain people. I've always said that winning Group A and having the two days off ahead of Saturday always suited Martin Adams down to the ground because he could really put himself forward for three days of hard action and then recover. It's been the word of the day. But I have to say, we haven't had a great deal of 180s today, even though we've had a lot 59. of ton plus outs. Yeah, it's been... Checking, that's, that's only... Kieran Tian's second at 180 of 65. the day. That's shocking, really, considering his talent level. But what are you going to get with Raymond Smith? If Kieran, you require 160. Not on social media, by the way. He will always call it as he sees it. He's remarkably honest. And I like that he followed his own MO there by speaking to Chris Murphy about how he feels about this week. He does want to win Group A. He wants to win the week. But he also wants to do everything that puts him in the 60. right frame of mind Kieran and the right form for his challenges while he's in Europe. I'm just looking across Kieran's stats. 21. He's usually not far off at least one 180 per match. So that shows you the how he's underperformed for Kieran himself Kieran requires today. seven. That means he's going to get a lot tomorrow or a ridiculous amount in this game, maybe. Can you find double two? Three. Oh, he's wired at both Drawing times. You couldn't get any closer. This will be a real steal. Trouble 19 for tops. He can't find the trouble, so a reprieve for Tihan. 56. Kieran, you require four. He's wired it again. Same hole. Got to give it a go. Game and he shot forces it leg. into the Guaranteed. left hand side as if he's just scored a touchdown. But here's the thing if he'd scored a touchdown, he would have scored six points, not four. Second leg, it's Jerome to throw first. Game on. How is, your, is, it, is there American football on at the minute, mate? It's the. Oh, well, we're getting towards the end of the regular season. Steelers beat the. Falcons last night, so it was a it was a good night for me. Were you watching that? I watched the highlights this morning. 
Nine, there was another six, game seven. on yesterday that took precedence. Yeah, I don't think my team's going to be involved in the playoffs this year, so pressure's off. I've had a lot of people coming up to me, actually, and saying, who do you fancy to win the Super Bowl? The I don't know emoji. Not a clue. Is it's that not how the really season a... has been this year? It's been so open. 60. If I was to pitch for anybody, and I can't believe I'm about to say this. It makes me feel a bit sick, actually. The Philadelphia Eagles. 125. If you want to wear Pittsburgh and Philadelphia are in the same state, so they are state rivals. Well, that is a gorgeous, gorgeous 171. Oh, and he's looking to get the 303 and 6. Yeah, he needed that. He needed something just to, to pick him up. What about this for a shot? 77 left. Yeah, I think the treble 19 is calling again. And it does. What Jordan an answer to that 171. Oh, boy, you've got to be kidding me. What a shot this would be. Right. It would have been nine perfect darts between 20. them. <clears throat> you don't mind losing legs that way. But you don't mind winning legs this way. No score. But that's been the story of his day. Jerome, you require 44. Oh, talking of America, here's a bit of Motown. No. It's open for four tops. Game shot on the second leg. Well, we'll give him it Jerome anyway. Leon. Motown is Detroit. And they are the Lions. And funnily enough, they play in a shade of blue, which isn't that Third dissimilar. Third Kieran to throw first. Game shirt. on. Motor City, isn't it? That's what they call it. Not sure how many cars they make in Detroit anymore. 60. No, I don't think any. Oh, mistake from Tian. Will it be punished? 81. They used to have one of the best basketball teams in the NBA. The Detroit Pistons. That's where Dennis Rodman played before he went to the Chicago Bulls. Oh. They had one of the most fearsome defenses in the NBA in the 90s. They were 85. almost like the Wimbledon of the first division in 1988. They were feared. You don't tend to get that kind of factor in darts where someone is so fierce that they'll make you frightened. Eighty five. Well, Frank has an opportunity here. Bangs bangs the sixty beautifully, be disappointed not to follow that. Eighty. Dear. That one smacked against his own flight, didn't it? Maybe that's one of the disadvantages of having longer points. That maybe that longer setup, when it slaps against 54. the other two darts, it just doesn't have any momentum left. Yeah, there's no energy left in the dart going forward. Oh, I, like, I like the grip. It's just, it's just a very basic throw, isn't it? And more often than not, that, that will work. There's a lot to admire about his game. I think... There's definitely something there. Certain Beachy actions seven. are very Drawing appealing on the eye. And three. when he's in position, there's a lot to admire. I think today well, has suited the fact that he's got Easy Danny two. here. He's, Kieran, you require 160. His English is certainly better than my Dutch, but, well, apart from swear words and how to order a beer, but. Yeah, so it must be nice for so someone to have a good conversation with him there and just feel a little bit at home. You don't see many players stuck on 21 points very often. 92. Jerome, you require 21. It's a simple conversion. If you find the double eight. Game which he does. Shot on the third leg. Picture perfect. Jerome and at this stage, we have to recognize the fact that your own is obviously more confident than his Full opponent. Leg. It's your own to throw first. And this will Game be the on. first match of tomorrow. So... Before Raymond Smith, Adam Atkinson, Ben Robb, and Danny Van Tripe throw one more competitive dart in week seven, your own Mirk could be on eight points if he wins this game and beats Kieran again tomorrow morning. 44. Yeah, it's almost uh, like a six pointer in football, isn't it? 
43. It's like having the game in hand and making sure you're putting the pressure on the other people by using that game in hand. Yeah. And of course, when you the psychological aspect of already having a, a win over your opponent going into that first game tomorrow, his last memory is losing to you and his next memory may be the same thing. 100. Yeah, I can side with you on that one. When somebody beats you in a game like this, the last person you want to see really is the person who's just taken you out. Yeah. 100. You'd prefer a, a couple of weeks before a rematch. <laughs> Not a couple of hours. 100. I believe it was Mark Walsh who said to me once, I'm sick of the sight of you. I took that as a compliment. I was, I was the same with Taylor. I had a run where I was 16, 16 in the Drawing world. Drawing you require 180. Every weekend, twice a weekend. Taylor, Taylor, Taylor. 52. Well, that's not the end of the world, but he's put himself on a number that still requires a treble to get to the outer ring. Yeah, he may only end up with just the one dart. 40. Had a double, but that takes a huge amount of pressure Drawing off. Drawing requires 66. There you go. Double 18. Game shot on the fourth looking leg. like a Drone confident dart off. player. He's just moseying along, averaging around 83 and a half, which right now is good enough against Kieran, who is Kieran not finding first. Game his on. B game at all. Well, he's very much doing what we don't advise, but sometimes it can work, and that's he's playing his opponent. 59. He's just sort of saying, right, let's, let's have a game of beat the score, and if I get to the double before you, I take it out. You could be the fastest man in the world at 5,000 meters. But you don't have to be doing 13 minutes for 5,000 meters if your opponent is doing 15. 134. Exactly. We've had two 180s in this game. There haven't been that many games where we had more than two 180s in a game. We've had over, we've had over 12 ton plus finishes. 132. Oh, doesn't leave a finish, but piles the pressure on the 262. Mm. I don't think your own got that right. You should have gone to the 18s on dot two. Yep. Not often you see a Dutch player get the tactics wrong. No, the counting is usually 140. far more advanced than the vast majority. Let's see, he goes to the same earring store 42. as Danny Nobbett. Kieran, you require 36. I'll have the black one, thanks. 46. Surely. Game oh. shot on the fifth leg. Finally, it Guaranteed. goes in. It had to go in with those two markers. Absolutely criminal if that had not gone in. But it's only a hold of throw. Sixth leg, it's your own to throw first. Game on. It's actually a very unusual name. I've never seen the, the name Yaron or even Miok. But I've seen three of those in this game now, two of them belonging to Yaron. Miok sounds like a glass of vino I'd like. Throw <laughs> some pate as well, of course. <laughs> I know what I'm getting you for Christmas. 59. Pate and Rioja combo. <laughs> and some gout tablets. One hundred and forty. He's starting to shine a little bit more now, Tian. Yeah, but is it too spells. late? One hundred and twenty-three. Oh, that's a one, two, three. I might have even gone to the nineteens with that last dart, but that's turned out really well. He just seems so 94. confident in the Jerome targets he's aiming at. One hundred and thirty-nine. Take ninety-nine to leave tops. Fifty-nine. Kieran can put plenty of pressure on this. Remember the eighties for the match. Comes with its own unique bit of pressure. 
137. you require 80. But it's all in the hands of the Dutchman. He can finish the job right here. That's a great single. Game and that is a superb finish the from Jerome the Mayor. Dutchman, who is going to finish the day on six points. And over the next 18 or so hours, Kieran Tien is going to have to mull on the fact that he is walking away from Monday with zero points. Jeroen Mierk debutant today, finding an 86.16 average. But look at those checkouts. At 80, at the end, was his best. 67%, though. That will get the job done most of the time. Kieran Tien has got a lot of work to do if he is to find himself anywhere close to the top of the table, or in fact, to find his way to the top three should he want to qualify for Group B on Thursday and Friday. We are going to speak to the Chris's on the balcony in just a second, but just to give you a bit of a reminder, it was Van Tripp who got four points today, Jeroen Mierk got six, Adam Atkinson got two, Ben Rob was not bad, eight out of ten, but the main man today was Raymond Smith. He got ten points and a leg difference of plus 14. Over to the Chris's on the balcony to wind up today. Thank you for your company, everybody. Thanks very much, Paul. Yeah, Chris, a great way to finish for your own, but a terrible day for Kieran Tian. Yeah, he's had those before. I think when you start off a little bit slow, and his, in his last time here in Champions Week, it didn't go his way. So, yeah, work to do, but he won't be too disheartened. He knows how to bounce back. Well, let's have a look at that league table, and it doesn't make good reading for him. It makes excellent reading for Raymond Smith, but I've got a feeling that the battle between him and Ben Robb is far from over. Yeah, I think that's going to go, go on throughout the week, irrelevant of what happens or which one of those two manages to win this Group A and get the Thursday and Friday off. Uh, they're, they're, when you look at the stats and you break all the numbers down, they're very, very well matched. A bit, bit of a difference in experience, of course. But, of course, with Ben Robb, he's going to get more and more experience as each day goes by. And, yeah, he's looking, the, he's looking the biggest danger to Raymond Smith right now. But a big win for Jerome. And, of course, he plays Kieran in the opening game tomorrow. So after match one, he could find himself in joint second spot. Yeah, what about Adam Atkinson, another player we haven't seen before? He's the ADC qualifier this week. Just the one win, but were there signs there for you that we could see better from him in the next couple of days? Yeah, in, in spells, I mean, it's a, it's a tough group to come into as well. And the way that everybody else sort of started around you, we, we spoke about it early on about just getting disconnected from the, the leading group. And, and that's what's happened to him. And tomorrow he's going to have to make a big start. If he's going to make a claim for maybe not necessarily the top place, but that second or third spot to get into Thursday and Friday night's evening group. Do you see, finally, Raymond Smith has won all of his matches? I know Paul Nicholson said, sort of tongue-in-cheek, that he could break records here. But do you think that's actually possible, that he could go and win every match in this group? Uh, no, no, I, I, don't, I don't think so. I think it's too strong a group. I, think, I don't think we've seen the best from Danny, and I think Jerome looks like he's got another gear as well. Uh, and, uh, and, of course, with Ben Robbie, he should have really won that game today. It was, it was only probably trying too hard to, to win the match is what ultimately cost him getting over the line. He had multiple match darts, uh, and I think he will have known what he did wrong and then come back tomorrow or Wednesday and put that right. If it was a slightly easier group, then, yeah, maybe you could talk of records, but this is a tough group. Well, maybe we'll resume this chat at the same point tomorrow. Uh, we're back on air, 9.30 a.m., live on Sporty Stuff TV and around the world, free of charge at the Modus Super Series YouTube channel. But on day one, it was Super Smith who made a super start at the Super Series. <laughs> 